त्या दिवशी तुम्ही म्हणले अदर पार्टिसिपेंट्स काइंडली टर्न ऑफ युअर वीडियो एंड मैक्रोफोन राईट ओके येस सर परफेक्ट uh not that much could you unmute here sir hello yes ma'am hello namaste to everyone very blissful blissful good morning to all of you and adhiri mere jashpande it is an enormous indulgence for me to welcome all the teachers and participants for this online harvest international faculty techno improvement program which is well organized by department of physics and life sciences netaji kumar chandra board college nandeed maharashtra india you know that the big outbreak of covid 19 has caused problems in the functioning of all the countries of the world health medicine education business economy etc are all affected badly but with the bursting of responsibilities on all the governments institutions doctors academicians are working together on the construction of a new path for the future in accordance with the present scenario suddenly this is the right time to vindicate our responsibilities of wisdom to know wisdom to do wisdom to live together and wisdom to be so at this instant I am predominantly pleased and delighted to welcome one and all for this conference. Today we gather here virtually for the inauguration of the function online five days international faculty techno improvement program. It is our conjecture that very gigantic personalities will be taking part in the inauguration function, irrespective of their extremely hectic schedules. I, from the bottom of my heart, am humbly welcome. chairperson of this inaugural function honorable balasaheb ji pandey sir president of abhino bharat shikshan sanstha nandeed i very reverentially welcome today's chief guest highly regarded honorable vice chancellor dr uddhav ji bhosle sir swami ramanand tirtha marathwada university nandeed i very reverentially welcome inaugurator of this conference dr sridhi rode sir emeritus scientist at national chemical laboratory pune i very politely welcome all the eminent resource persons at this conjuncture dr s k omanwar sir head department of physics present in distinguished ugc vsr faculty fellow at sant gadge baba university amravati dr maria luisa testa ma'am permanent research chemist at institute for the study of nano structured material ismn of the in Italian National Research Council Italy Dr Ravindra Deshpande sir post doctoral scientist Wake Forest School of Medicine Department of Cancer Biology Western Salem North Carolina USA Dr S K Pawar sir um maths video with like hello 
हाँ यस मैम या डॉक्टर एस एच पवार सर एमिरेटस साइंटिस्ट फॉर्मर बी सी शिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी कोलहापुर डॉक्टर सुरेश एस जे इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस बैंगलोर कर्नाटका इंडिया डॉक्टर जितेंद्र कुलकर्णी सर हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एट डॉक्टर गाड़गे बाबा यूनिवर्सिटी उस्मानाबाद डॉक्टर शरदा कोंडावार नेहरू पोस्ट पोस्ट डॉक्टर फेलोशिप सी एस आर नीरी नागपुर डॉक्टर सचिन सकाटे असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन केमिस्ट्री पुणे डॉक्टर हरिहर वेंकट रमना असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन फिजिक्स बिट्स पिलानी हैदराबाद डॉक्टर शबाना शेख डी एस कोठराई पोस्ट डॉक्टरल फेलोशिप यूजीसी न्यू डेली इंडिया डॉक्टर डॉक्टर शशि श्रीवास्तवा इस्तंबुल तुर्की डॉक्टर मनु प्रताप सिंह प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस आग्रा डॉक्टर एन एन बंडेला प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल साइंस डॉक्टर शरद वनलकर असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर एट द कर्मवीर हिरे आर्ट साइंस कॉमर्स एंड एजुकेशन कॉलेज फ्रॉम गौरगोटी डॉक्टर राजेश कोनाड़े सर साइंटिस्ट एट नेशनल केमिकल लैबोरेटरीज पुणे डॉक्टर विवेक बोबड़े सर प्रोफेसर पीजी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एचपीटी एंड आर वाई के कॉलेज फ्रॉम नाशिक आई वेरी रिस्पेक्टफुली वेलकम चीफ ऑर्गनाइजर ऑफ दिस कॉन्फरेंस डॉक्टर सुधीर शिवनीकर सर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द होस्ट कॉलेज आई वेरी ग्रेशियसली वेलकम प्रोग्राम ऑर्गनाइजर एंड कन्वेनर ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस डॉक्टर मनीष देश पांडे सर हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड मटेरियल साइंस हाउ एवर आई वेलकम ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज एंड एमिनेंट रिसोर्स पर्सन डिस्टिंग्विश्ड गेस्ट एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू हैंड ओवर दिस सेशन टू द प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइजर एंड कन्वेनर ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस डॉक्टर मनीष देश पांडे सर हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड मटेरियल साइंस टू एक्सप्रेस इज व्यूज and more to about the conference hello ho oh, ban am i audible yes sir uh, venkatesh uh, sir kindly stop presenting your screen venkatesh venkatesh sir please stop sharing your screen select on stop presenting should i start sir hi ah, yes sir good morning to all of you i am dr manish deshpande hod physics and material science and also the convener of this conference i have an immense pleasure to welcome chair person honorable mr bala saheb pande chief guest honorable bc dr uddhav ji bosle sir inaugurator of this conference honorable dr cv rode sir Uh, chief organizer dr sudhir shivnikar sir however i am extremely grateful to welcome eminent resource person distinguished guests and proficient participants students academicians and other two in this online fdi ftip during june 22 to 26 2020 the theme of the conference is familiarity with characterization tools and techniques in arena of scientific research the organizing committee is looking forward to organize an exceptional conference with new and interesting session and discussion and to meet new people where you can share your subject and passion at fdi ftip 2020 you can acquire new information and will be very useful for expanding the knowledge in the field and generating new ideas to improve yourself and your research and professional career now what is the importance and scope of this conference there are huge number of places in india and even in other countries where scientific research is uninterruptedly going on but the main problem is of its analysis and easily availability of instrumentation this conference conducts a wide range of sessions and tracks which provides the participants and all attendees with an opportunity to extend their information in the relevant subject and interact with professionals in the field of scientific research the agenda of the conference highlights new and advanced science and current topics with interesting sessions our conference provides best platform for research through oral presentations share the ideas with both eminent researchers and mentors platform for collaboration among young researchers for better development i am confident that valuable knowledge and ideas sprinkled by the resource person 
through this conference to all the participants will prove useful to overcome new challenges and will define a new dimension in dealing with instruments i wish you a very interesting and knowledge enhancing five days thank you thank you very much Thank you, sir. For your distinguished question and welcoming. Thank you, sir. For your distinguished question and welcoming all the dignitaries and participants once again. Now I would like to request to the honourable distinguished Dr. Sunil Shukla sir to give a brief introduction about the body of our college and to please welcome all the dignitaries and participants. Who is Austrian Johnson? Once again, please welcome, sir. Unicorn, sir. Ah, kindly unmute yourself. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good morning to all of you. At the outset, it is my pleasure to welcome Honorable Mr. Bala Sahib Ji Pandey, President of Abhinavara Shikshan Sanstha Nanded and President of today's inaugural function of Five Days International Faculty Techno Improvement Program. Chief Guest, Honorable Dr. Uddhav Ji Bosle Sir, Vice Chancellor of Swami Ramananda Tirth Marathwada University Nanded, Inaugurator Honorable Dr. C V Rode Sir. Emeritus scientist NCL Pune, all the renowned scientists and resource persons, and all the participants. Instrumentation has often been cited as a pacing factor of research. The productivity of researchers is only as great as the tools they have available to observe, measure, and make sense of nature. From the beginning of the development of modern scientific method, it is emphasis on Testable hypothesis required the ability to make quantitative and ever more accurate measurements. Here, I congratulate Dr. Manish Deshpande and all the heads of the science faculty of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose College, Nanded, who have selected such an important topic of research for faculty improvement program and for their efforts in organizing organization of online international faculty techno improvement program. Now, as far as our Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose College is concerned, the current college student strength is around 3,000, including junior, senior, and post graduation section. The college is being accredited twice by NAC with B plus grade. Our college has three faculties: Arts, Commerce, and Science, up to entry level, and also having post graduate in seven subjects such as organic and inorganic chemistry, microbiology. environmental science public administration sanskrit commerce and political science moreover college has five recognized research centers in physics organic and inorganic chemistry microbiology environmental science and public administration with very well equipped research laboratories more than 70 students have been awarded by their doctoral degree and many students with their mphil degree our pg students of sanskrit and environmental science have ever ranked first or second rank in the final examinations of srtm university nanded every year our cultural department pulls various awards in the glory of our college the college has been awarded as a champion in youth festival of swami ramananda tirth marathwada university nanded dynamically four times in a succession every year our sports department is found to be outstanding who claimed various university state level and national level awards in the credit of our college so there is a gigantic number of achievements some of them i put before you i know well that you are all are extremely eager to hear resource persons and to acquire the skills of handling the instrument thus i don't want to be a, a opaque in between you and the resource persons Thank you very much. Thank you, Principal Sir. It is a gigantic respect and opportunity for me, on behalf of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose College, Nanded, to welcome today's chief guest, highly regarded 
ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर डॉक्टर उद्धवजी भोसले सर स्वामी रामानंद तीर्थ मराठवाडा युनिव्हर्सिटी नांदेड टू गिव हिज बेस्ट विशेष टू द ऑनलाईन फायदेज इंटरनॅशनल फॅकल्टी टेक्नो इम्प्रुव्हमेंट प्रोग्राम बाय ग्रेसिंग विथ युअर युअर इंथुजिक स्पीच प्लीज वेलकम सर very good morning to one and all present on this virtual dais dignities on this virtual dais sri bala saheb ji pande the president abhinav bharat shikshan sanstha nanded the dr rode emeritus scientist from national chemical laboratories pune dr shivankar principal principal of this college the the resource person participants ladies and gentlemen it gives me immense pleasure to inaugurate this five day faculty development program on uh, technology improvement faculty development uh, faculty technology improvement program organized by these institutions i formally declare that this faculty development program is inaugurated at the same time i extend my best wishes for the success of this faculty development program and i hope that this faculty development program will be an outcome based program which will benefit all the teachers who have participated in this faculty development program as we are aware that during this covid 19 pandemic situations many of these institutions have organized the faculty development program on various issues but this faculty development program is something which that first time i see such kind of program. this faculty development program is something different which is focusing on the training the teachers to use the different instruments that we use in teaching and research activities of the subjects or teaching research activities i definitely put on records that definitely this is a good uh, faculty development program and i congratulate the principal of this institution head department of physics and entire team for organizing this something different kind of the faculty development program it is learned that during this faculty development program the experts are going to talk on the different uh, machines that we use like nmr XRD, ACM, PM, FTIR, XPS, ETC. So these machines not only we use in physical sciences; these machines we use in all sciences that we come across. And I hope that uh, when the teachers are trained in using these machines, then def definitely teaching learning level of the student will definitely increase, which will in turn Im will improve. they are interested in the subject because many times when we teach the student practically definitely it helps to increase the uh, learning level or interest into the subject and i hope that with this teacher will be trained and which will in turn will train the student which will improve the teaching learning process to a large extent with this few words again i congratulate the principal and his team for organizing this wonderful program and i extend my best wishes for the success of this faculty development program thank you thank you very much thank you very much honorable vice chancellor uddhavji bhosle sir for your blessful speech it is an immense honor and privilege for me on behalf of netaji subhash chandra bos college nanded to welcome dr cp rode sir emeritus scientist at national chemical laboratories pune to inaugurate this conference and to give his opening remarks on this Online five days international faculty techno improvement program. Please welcome sir. Yes, thank you very much. So 
Honorable President of ABS uh, uh, Institution, uh, Mr. Balasai Pandey, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Nanded Ramananda Tirtha University in Nanded, Devji Bosle Sir, uh, Honorable Principal of this college. Uh, Dr. Shunikar, sir, and the organizer. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, for inviting me uh, to be here as an inaugurator for this uh, five-day-long conference. And in fact, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Manish Deshpande for organizing this on a virtual platform because uh, we are now living a, a new life of this uh, uh, due to this pandemic of uh, social or physical distancing and he has made an excellent attempt to bring the minds together on this virtual platform and to have such uh, scientific deliberations uh, on a very important topic of this uh, frontiers or the instrumental techniques for characterization and for which a number of eminent speakers are present uh, for example from uh, within the country as well as from abroad like us italy and uh, turkey and uh, this, uh, the the, the uh, galaxy of these eminent speakers, uh, they are composing of not only the experienced one, but also the fresh uh, uh, people who are now entering into the research area or the academics uh, with their uh, background in uh, strong background with their PhDs or PDFs in the respective fields. And uh, this uh, is being organized. What I noticed another very unique character characteristic of this conference is it is being uh, organized jointly by Department of Physics and the Life Sciences. So this is a very good attempt because this becomes an interdisciplinary uh, area and the audience also will be interdisciplinary because uh, the instrumental techniques uh, is not the only uh, what you can say monopoly of certain discipline. It, it has a wide range applications in all fields, in all fields, uh, subjects, subject areas, and which gives the very, uh, uh, what you can say, a very powerful tool in the hands of researchers uh, to be, uh, to do some advanced research and to have uh, applications directly uh, for the human life, for day to day life, which you have already witnessed, for example, in this pandemic, actually there has been uh, a talk of this diagnostic tools okay which requires different instruments as well as different techniques so which is becoming the most important thing in this pandemic and which uh, determines the further course of action of the affected patients <clears throat> uh, similarly the treatment of such diseases also is very important which requires the uh, different uh, techniques you know and of course uh, for chemistry physics and other disciplines we are well aware of this uh, now, another unique uh, feature of this uh, conference is, uh, now this is meant for the faculty, so which is uh, again very important. So the speakers, uh, I'm sure, uh, they, 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 they will impart the very advanced knowledge on these different uh, instrumental techniques and uh, which uh, the faculty may or may not be aware because they are mainly busy in teaching uh, uh, their routine things. And so this, what happens is this advanced knowledge, when it is uh, taken up by the faculty, then they, they could inspire the students and they make aware, they, make, they, they, they give the exposure to the students of this uh, new techniques or the advanced knowledge in this field. And this becomes the driving force for the students to go ahead in the, whether it is in research career or for employment also it is necessary. And I think these are some unique features and I again congratulate <coughs> Dr. Manish Deshpande, having organized this within a very short period of time with good galaxy of expert speakers. And I am sure these deliberations will be very much useful to the participants in general. I think there are about 50 odd participants, so definitely it will be beneficial for all of us. And I wish all the grand success to the organizers for this conference. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much, sir, for your giving opening remarks. At this moment, I humbly request today's chairperson and president of Abhino Bharat Shikshan Sangstha, esteemed Shri Balasarachi Pandey, sir, to give his presidential address. I can do it. 
स्लाइटली डाउन यूर कैमरा हेलो स्लाइटली बरबर कारण है तो नहीं तू चालू कर बोल रही तुम सुरू चलो क्या नहीं परफेक्ट परफेक्ट आता यस सर सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू दिसन आ रही नहीं बर इट इज एन इमेंस प्लीजर फॉर मी टू बी हियर एज ए चेयरपर्सन एट एन एनॉग्रल फंक्शन ऑफ ऑनलाइन फाइव डेज इंटरनेशनल फैकल्टी टेक्नो इम्प्रूवमेंट प्रोग्राम That is FDIF TIP 2020, which is structured by Department of Physics and Life Sciences, Abhinav Bharat Shikshan Samstha, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose College, Nande. On behalf of the fraternity of Abhinav Bharat Shikshan Samstha, I, as the president, have immense pleasure and pride for warm welcome of Chief Guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor. डॉक्टर उद्धवजी भोसले स्वामी रामानंद तीर्थ मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी नांदेड़ एंड इनोग्रेटर ऑफ दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर सी वी रोडे इमेरिटस साइंटिस्ट एन सी एल पुणे आई एम ऑल्सो डिलाइटेड टू वेलकम रिसोर्स पर्सन पर्सन अदर डिस्टिंग डेलीगेट्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड हु केम ऑनलाइन टू एक्सचेंज देअर एक्सपीरियंसेस एक्सपीरियंस एंड वर्क टूगेदर at the foremost i wish to extend my greeting to the program organizer dr manish deshpande head department of physics and his panel who took efforts for arranging online five days international faculty techno improvement program on exclusively important issue of characterization tools and techniques under the supervision of chief organizer principal dr sudhir shunika i hope in this conference all eminent resources person will put their keynote on some blazing issues of characterization tools and techniques such as in research methodology its global dimension and conveniences etc however i request all resource person to please to please answer the relevant questions raised by the participant so that all the participants will feel success of attending the conference so ladies and gentlemen i will not take your more time to hear a resource persons but before closing my speech i have to extend further thanks to all of you who all together greatly helped in organizing this conference in a such a decisive period of corona pandemic let me now close my wishing to all delightful and stimulating five days Thank you very much, Jai Hind. Thank you, Chairman Sir, for your invaluable talk and encouragement. Thank you, Sir, once again. At this instant, I request Rajya Sadavarthi Sir to please take the charge for vote of thanks. Before that, please allow me to take leave for a while from you. Please stay home and stay safe. Thank you. Good morning, respected members of this international faculty technology program. Honourable Sushi Bosle Sir, Vice Chancellor Amiraman Varadwada University Nande, Honourable Dr. Sivi Rode Sir, Emeritus Scientist N C L Pune, Honourable Bala Sahib Ji Pandey, Honourable Bala Sahib Ji Pandey, President Abhinav Bharat Shikshan Sanstha Nande. डॉक्टर एस वी शिवनीकर रिस्पेक्टेड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स डॉक्टर मनीष देश पांडे ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ इंटरनेशनल फैकल्टी टेक्नो इम्प्रूवमेंट प्रोग्राम इट्स माय प्रिविलेज टू हैव बीन आस्ट टू प्रपोज अ वोट ऑफ थैंक ऑन दिस ओकेजन माय सेल्फ राजेश केशर ऑफ सदा हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड आई पी एस सी कॉर्डिनेटर 
on the half of nsb college dandel and department of physics life sciences i am here to propose a vote of thanks first of all i would like to propose heartily vote of thanks to our chief guest honorable dr uddhav bhosle sir vice chancellor swami ramanand tin marathwada university nandel who came here and support us for such novel activities i would like to thank honorable bala sir ji pande president abhinav bharat shikshan sanstha nandel to encourage us for such activity i would also li like to thank honorable dr rode sir kensial pune without him it is not possible to arrange this international faculty techno improvement program i would i would also like to thank respected principal dr s p sunika sir for his moral support and guidance i am happy to express the vote of thanks to dr manish deshpande dr girish pande dr m y kulkarni all and all other members who take the very much effort to arrange such wonderful techno faculty improvement program lastly i would like to thank the participant of this international faculty techno improvement program without them it is not possible to conduct such type of activity once again thank you all thanks all thank you sir now it's a time of technical session today we have three honorable and eminent resource persons who will be taking part on the enormous important characterization tools required in scientific research before the start of this session it is my sincere request and important announcement to all the participants that if they have any question regarding any question please put my questions in the chat box only those questions will be answered in the qa session which you have already put in chat box however you will be please put your microphone on mute mode thank you now i would like to hand over the session to the program organizer and convener of this conference dr manish deshpande sir head department of physics to introduce uh, today's resource uh, foremost resource person dr s k omanwar sir it is an immense honor and privilege for me to introduce today's foremost resource person dr s k oman marsar who is going to deliver his speech on an incredibly vital topic of role of luminescent materials dr s k oman marsar was the senior professor hack and former head department of physics presently distinguished a ugc bsr faculty fellow at Santa Gadge Baba University, Amravati. Dr. Omanwar Sir has a vast teaching, research, administrative experience, and has a distinctive research career in developing inorganic luminescent materials for various applications, such as mercury-free lamps, SSL display devices, lead-based phototherapy devices, spectral matching uh, photo uh, phosphors for solar PV panels, PLA LCD, PDP panels, CFL bulbs, PLD. and osl materials for personal radiation monitoring as well as bio materials he developed the competitive product specially pld osl and ssl devices of commercially available he has developed a cost effective method such as simple combustion method with little modification for the synthesis of these materials with ease he has good citations received with scopus and thomson and routers he completed several individual research projects and many infrastructural research projects in the university he has published more than 650 articles research papers of which 258 in reputed journals that are indexed in scopus 159 thomson and router 120 he delivered several invited talks at international events and also chaired several international technical sessions as a member of patent to his he has number of patents to his credit he guided successfully 25 students for phd he has 26 awards and 178 recognitions to his credit he received very important lifetime award by luminescence society of india he is the fellow of maharashtra academy of sciences he got dr b t deshmukh national research award an outstanding scientist award by very good Innovative Industries Association Chennai. And recently, in 
UGC BSR Faculty Fellow Award by University Grant Commission, New Delhi. He received Best Thesis Award of BRNS BAE India in 1985 for PhD thesis. Presently, UGC BSR Fellow with effect from July 1, 2019, he worked as a senior higher grade professor, first time in Maharashtra state to, to this scale and had com completed 19 years of service as a professor in the university. He has been offered free hospitality by AERE, Harvell UK for postdoc work. Recently, he participated in the IUMRS ICA 2012 at Busan, South Korea, and now also working as a member of 11 International Advisory Committee in four coming years. Still many more. To what extent should I introduce the eminent professor? I think the words are very, very few for me. So please welcome, sir. Please welcome and uh, start your Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Is You're it right okay? Uh, no. Screen is not visible. Eh? Screen. I will uh, now share the screen. One minute. Is it okay. Not it. Has it come? Ah, yes, sir. It, it, it is visible. Visible? Yes, sir. I should also see the thing. Is it okay, sir? Uh, visible, sir. Uh, I think uh, the screen is uh, not complete, no? Uh -huh. It was not complete, but it was visible. It is visible. No, it is visible. You can click on that play button as well. It's full, full screen. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, the perfect sir. Uh, I wish to get the previous one. Okay, let it be. Uh, I am very much thankful to specifically uh, Dr. Manish Deshpande, who has really invited me to deliver a talk at this particular platform. And this platform, which is uh, being organized by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, Arts, Commerce and Science, affiliated to the Nandet University. Of which Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Bosley is a very good friend of mine. I know also the inaugurator of this particular event, CS Rode, sir. And I am also very happy that Professor S. H. Pawar is also. Uh, affiliated to this particular uh, program. This program is really a wonderful program where though the participants are less, I am happy that there will be a more and more interactions. I dedicate this particular presentation 
to my guru, late Professor Dr. B. T. Deshmukh, who was professor at the Department of Physics, head of the department, and as well as he was dean faculty of science, Nagpur University. I consider that Swami Vivekananda is the torch bearer of all of us because the Swami Vivekananda uh, has given new vision to the world. Uh, let us uh, see simply one attitude. Max Muller, who is a great scientist, invented eraser. What he said? He said, it is for those who make mistakes. And we know that people are making the recover, people are making mistakes means they are not. And for them to remove those mistakes, uh, Max Muller invented an eraser. However, the Swami Vivekananda said, erasers are made for those who are willing to correct their Means if I made the mistake, I should be willing to correct it. And then when will is there, then you can do such kind of things. He said, look at science, it has discovered a lot of things. It has made life absolutely different. But it has added to our tensions and worries. This is only because our emotional orientation is not right. And that is why the science has progressed so much. New and new virus, one, 400 and other viruses have gone COVID-19. We are undergoing such a pandemic situation. And it is only because the emotional orientation of the human is not right and therefore it is very much necessary necessary to obey the the topic today I selected is the role of luminous materials in sustainable development and why I have selected this particular topic is only because that the institution has organized this techno improvement program faculty for the faculty and whole team of the college is getting involved in that irrespective of their discipline irrespective of their subject irrespective of their expertise everybody is working for making a success a grand success of this particular program this is a multidisciplinary event and the topic which I have selected is also interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary. The role. The role. The field of luminescence is very much multidisciplinary. And since this is not only because you are belonging to physics discipline or chemistry discipline or life sciences or any other scientific Luminescence is important. Luminescent materials play very important role in all aspects of all disciplines. And therefore, the role played by luminescent materials is a major role. We shall uh, go for some basic definitions, principles, mechanisms, etc. And then we should also look for what is sustainable development, whether it is different from the development, the simple development and the sustainable development. As you know, the luminescent materials have got many applications. In early days, we have seen X-ray screen. X-ray screens, then X-ray scintillator, which are spontaneous activities of radioluminescence. Photoluminescence, you have got so many things, luminescent solar concentrators, PSL X-ray imaging, live luminescence, solid state lasers, up conversion, lamp phosphors, RPL phosphor, radio photoluminescent materials, security pens and inks, then PLLC panels, TV screens, FEDs, CRTs, LEDs, now solid state lighting, lasers, electroluminescent lamps, and full color. 
all those things everything is working on the basis of universal materials therefore the universal materials have got major role to play for so far as by contribution is concerned means our research group on contribution is concerned application we have uh, prepared materials for multidisciplinary publications all these publications as rightly pointed out by uh, dr manish desh pandey sir he has read a complete biodata and <coughs> in that whatever materials that are developed those materials are applied to various fields like lighting display technology photo therapy then radiation UV, solar concentrators, biomaterials, the nanomaterials, and the numbers which are being put there, these are the number number of publications in Scopus journal. And therefore, I say I have selected this particular topic, universal materials, for uh, the role of universal materials in sustainable uh, development. So these are uh, just the number of publications. Uh, during 2011 to 15 and 15 to 20 is also more. More important is that the publications which are published in various journals, international journals, their impact factor is also consistently increasing, and therefore you will find that the cumulative impact factor is very high. Why we could do this? It is only because of the students. Students are the a real human resource development. So far as any activity you consider the students, all is very much important. Uh, I used to select those two students who have taken education in real sense. Why? What is really a real sense? Because the education, I mean, that the education should build up the confidence amongst the students. Today means. Uh, the reading habits of the students have come. Good books are to be read by the students. The very principle for building up the confidence, I consider that I hear, I forget, I read, write, then only I remember. And when I do the things which are being remembered, which are being understood, then uh, if I do, then I will it will be easy for me to understand. And if I practice it, repeatedly doing it, then only I gain the confidence. You take anything, doing the experiment, doing the homework, doing the assignments, anything, student activity. If you follow this thing, definitely the uh, confidence will be better. I consider that the research should be product. It should be product oriented. How it can be? I think I, if I think, then I plan. I, I execute, then I do. And I implement, then only I produce. The research should be product to develop. I have to think and plan, investigate, then with creative thinking, I have to just fulfill the requirement to get the product. And development, the real development, will be there only when we produce providers. If I work out, I innovate. I dedicate, I incubate. And when I apply, I do extension. So research generation is nothing but it should pertain to job providers. All researchers should go for their own product and these products are nothing but uh, these are useful uh, commercial or viable products they will be developed to be achieved that is job provided means education should build up the confidence research should be productive and development then it should tend to provide this it should result in providers <laughs> so far as the luminescence is concerned Luminescence definition is very simple. That luminescence is defined as the emission of light by bodies which is in excess of that attributable to black body radiation and persists considerably longer 
than the periods of optical radiation after the excitation. And the materials which are activating this particular property are called as luminous materials or phosphorus. Uh, so what are the classifications? The classification bioluminescence. The uh, luminescence has got applications in biological uh, study. Means you can have cancer detection, cancer cure, and all the uh, techniques by tagging the luminescent materials to the particular uh, object or particular molecule. Optically stimulated luminescence, which is a new technique of radiation, is between geological data. The things which have happened several thousand years ago that can be easily estimated by OSL data. Photoluminescence that is always necessary and here lighting purposes, display purposes, purposes all these photoluminescence materials are used. Thermoluminescence materials are also useful in radiation uh, dating, radiation monitoring, in nuclear installations Every workers are required to be monitored what how much exposure he has got while doing cancer treatment also when light is gamma ray patient then the person who is handling those things should also the radiation exposures issued by him or her is to be monitored and for that thermal materials are very much cathode illumination materials and electrolysis the principle, what is the principle? The material phospholatis, phospholatis may have activators, activators absorb the energy excitation and then spontaneous energy. Otherwise, the excitation means the excited energy associated with the excited photon, those uh, radiations are being absorbed by the sensitizers in the host then these energies were transferred to the activators and then emission occurs. So there are two types of the process, uh, somewhat sensitizer for the mechanism, the configuration coordinate diagram uh, illustrating luminescence process. At ground state, electrons are excited by absorbing the energy which is the excitation process then you will have this non radiative transitions transformations and then the energy gap between these two states is the emission so energy is absorbed electrons or atoms are getting excited the non radiative transitions and the emission this is the materials compose of what is the composition? First material. First material is given in the periodic table all the, the alkali uh, or the metallic ions and here anions. The host material are made by uh, combinations of one of this and one or one or many from this. The dopants, what are the dopants, defects and impurities that play a very important role as activators. The dopants are activators or sensitizers, mainly the activators are rare earth and rare earth are all four elements. The transition metals can become sensitizers, these are transition metals or the S2 uh, ions, negative ions, these are, this can also work as the activators. Sensitizer and activators, sensitizer absorb the incident energy, photon or exciting electron. Often times, the host left is acts as a sensitizer. Or activator is the side effect on the glasses. Some common ions which act as activators are like this red is the activator, emitted photon, uh, absorbed photon by sensitizer, and then the energy is transferred to the machine. Host lattice are typically the host lattice have the following properties. 
first is a large band gap. A large band gap is to be in organic materials so as not to absorb the emitted radiation. Whatever radiation emission is there, that emission, uh, the emitted radiation should not get absorbed in the first place. And that's what we should have a while. It should be steep so that non radiative relaxation process, the energy consumed in this non radiative relaxation process, could be minimized. Therefore, the uh, first level should be steep. And these are few examples, the examples which are being given PL naturally occurring minerals under 365 nanometers. If you remove that uh, UV 365, Everything looks like uh, white. So, application areas as I mentioned, excitation, energy, force lattice, and activator, you can have so many applications. An excitation source, electron is the excitation source, X rays are the uh, 147, 172 nanometer, plasma scale, 172 nanometers, Chenon discharge lamps. 200 to 50 nanometers for high pressure uh, mercury discharge lamps and uh, mercury and uh, low pressure discharge lamps you should have an activator of 185 to 24 nanometer visibility series so important one are one are uh, lighting detecting and imaging purposes this is just the example of evolution of solid state lighting technology and you will see that 220 all organic lighting diodes they are uh, taking over so all are here at devices how lighting technologies what are the technologies that are used in can be sent 1878 and then uh, that is all filament the solid state the major progress is here and now the people are going for high uh, wattage of fluorescent lamp mercury field discharge mercury is dangerous to the human being or it is toxic and harmful also then the devices should be mercury free devices for that gas discharge fluorescent lamps which are free the materials that are very much uh, people are going for operating materials for this. The materials or the examples which we are, I will be taking, the materials are used in all kinds of things, say, uh, the solid state branch and gas Sustainable development. What I understand from sustainable development, sustainable development recognizes that growth must be both inclusive and environmentally sound to reduce priority and build shared prosperity for today's population and to continue to meet the needs of future generations. It must be efficient with resources and carefully planned to deliver immediate and long term benefits for people planning prosperity. That is what I mean the sustainable The concept of sustainable development Center for Sustainable Development. We have got three pillars training and capacity building, research and development, and then consultancy. So that consultancy, after a few years, the center should also sustain on their earnings so that it can generate economically viable and generate income. Research and development, this uh, should undertake projects, and this project from national and international funding agencies and various short term and mid term courses are also being planned for the governmental and non governmental which are stakeholders of skill development courses which are useful for self development that is the concept of the sustainable development which was uh, already uh, <coughs> And the university makes you a thick course of grant for this particular center. There are eight pillars, and all those things are being planned. I will skip some of the transparency for the time being. Uh, 
I go directly to the uh, presentation. So innovative, the research quality should be uh, characterized by two parameters, IQR and SIR. SIR, societal impact of research should be high and innovative quality of research should be also very high. So this IQR is in positive Y direction and SIR in positive X direction. The green box which has been shown, if your research is having both these green dots, research is highly appreciated. Therefore, whatever research which we are doing, whether it belongs to this green box or not, that is to be verified by each person. The second uh, type of research uh, one can have that the innovative quality of research should be very high or the uh, societal impact of research should be very high. So this green box and this uh, the, this box, if you are belonging to these two things, then also that research is accepted. However, the research uh, belonging to this third quarter uh, negative on both axes is uh, to be uh, uh, discarded. We have characterization techniques in our at our destination, that is X-ray diffraction techniques. Uh, this is very useful for material characterization. Second is scanning electron microscopy and furnaces of the desired uh, temperatures and desired Monitoring. The, from Chelgao, we used to take all this in the ACM. Hitachi 700 for photo luminescence, we have got radio luminescence, we have got photon technology. This uh, uh, research at TL and OSL reader, this is from Goriba. And the most important facility which is being taken online. Just like we are going for our online course, we have collaboration with Beijing, Singapore, Malaysia, Russia, and China. And we could get a remote access to this particular facility, particularly this beam which we are interested in uh, for the year. Uh, to get this particular beam, we have many uh, efforts. The efforts during 10, 11, 11, 12, these efforts have been taken, but these are only collaborative nature. But the efforts which have we have taken for getting the access for this, this access was obtained from this particular uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And in India, we are the only one, so the only one to get a remote access of this particular facility. And this is a collaboration with the SRF and it has a particularly indicated that we are uh, collaborating associated with this particular center since October 2000. More than 300 samples we have till they analyzed. And there is a protocol for sending the samples to UV recording or UV recording uh, confirmation of dates from the documentation for custom for each uh, sample which is to be sent, actually 30 to 35 pages history is to be given for the sample. Then we leave the sample is accepted. Then posted samples will be by studio service samples received by DSRF. They will get loaded with that and according to date will be given for uh, 72 hours, uh, 48 hours, and 20. This is what the facility is, and this is a BSRF station. And by LabVIEW software, we, our students can sit in our laboratory and they can uh, record whatever they want. To. They can select the excitation level, the emission level, and this has created a window excitation collection window. You can operate those things which are their excitation. All those readings are. We 
actually give more emphasis on novel synthesis of things. The reason is so you see how many techniques that are established. All these techniques, solid-state diffusion, combustion, or methods, method, precipitation, slow evaporation method, hydrothermal, the spray paralysis, all these techniques can be established at undergraduate college. In simple chemistry and physics laboratory at undergraduate college, engineering college, all these techniques can be established. Once you prepare the samples, the characterization and other things, you have got regional sophisticated instrumentation centers, IITs, and other uh, organizations where you can have collaboration. I have got so many collaborations for I will be useful for those who are really interested in doing characterization at any destination that too will work fast. The solid state diffusion method, these are the flow chart available in river. Metal oxides and dopants mix thoroughly in a mortar, worn dried at 50 degrees centigrade, heated at 400, 600, 80, 800, 800 or 1000 degrees centigrade for two hours each state in interminable in grinding and then white powder. If the starting material is what? Metal oxides. And just uh, you follow the procedure, you will get the time that is solid state diffusion. Combustion method, this is the combustion method which is initiated uh, by this party like Bangalore. I, I have taken training at his laboratory during 92 and then I train my students and now presently uh, applied to most of the materials in materials. You name the material, that material can be prepared by combustion. What is being taken? Metal nitrates and dopants are taken. Urea uh, and ammonium nitrate, which is oxidizer and fuel, adding distilled water, double distilled water, stirred for homogeneous solution. You obtain homogeneous solution, slowly heat at 90 degrees centigrade to remove the excess of water, and then kept in a digestive furnace, which is preheated at this, this, and then urea and ammonium nitrate fuel and oxidation, oxidizer. They will start initiation higher and then you will get uh, within two three minutes the sample is ready. Steric gel method, steric gel method, you have got uh, melt and metal nitrate phosphate precursors, solution boils, cool white gel, heated slowly at 200 degrees, ready gel, then uh, calcine at particular temperature, uh, then shining black resin and shading of resin, white powder, silver, and quenched temperature. Aldo Keto method is no charts are available, different procedures are available. Those who are interested in getting procedure, I can email the papers which indicates all the details of these uh, methods. Precipitation method is the simplest method can be established at any of the undergraduate institution. Co-precipitation, recrystallization, or slow evaporation method that is also easily to be established at any of the colleges. Wet chemical method this is also to be established. For example, why all these methods I have explained, or why? Uh, different methods are taken. See, one more phosphor which we have got in mind, what the experiment is being done, this white yttrium oxide doped with U3 plus. This is being prepared by what? Co precipitation method, aldo keto method, combustion method, solid state diffusion method. And this is what the uh, XRD, uh, that is ICD file number. This is the standard XRD pattern. And the products which are obtained by these four methods are also the XRD being taken and it is very well matching every process. Method of synthesis use the perfect product so far as XRD characterization. But if you go for different characterization, you like photoluminescence. 
If I take the photo luminescence, I have find that if the emission is maximum for U3 plus 5D0 to 7 2 that red graph, this is excited at what? <coughs> 254, 254 excitation. And this is the sample which is uh, co precipitation. This is the product which is obtained from co precipitation method is giving highest uh, commercially uh, comparable to commercial product that is photoluminescence and red phosphor. Uh, this red emission is being obtained from co precipitation. Why this is having higher intensity, aldo keto? is the next one which is blue one then yellow is the combustion method and solid state diffusion method black one is having very small intensity several times the intensity can be achieved if the same product is prepared by combustion uh, that is co precipitation method actually the, com uh, the commercial products are being prepared by solid state diffusion method and the performance of this particular material is worse than the same uh, if you prepare the material by solid state diffusion. But why does this intensity is higher? If you go to the next side, you go for next characterization. The next characterization I do, I did here two types of characterization. One is particle size distribution by Oribo, and that is uh, being obtained various institutes. I sent the samples all the four products. I got the records, PDF files from them and then I analyzed the things. This is being done on screen electron microscopy and gel bar. And this is SSD. A is SSD. What is? There are very different particles and you will see that for A, the product, SSD product, uh, the product obtained from solid state diffusion has got a dumbbell shape curve, particle size distribution is more or less symmetrical, and you will have higher particles. The distribution is uh, the size of the particle is very high. And here, if you go for combustion, then you will see that combustion method. You have got this green curve. Here, the particle size, average particle size, is smaller than the average particle size obtained from the solid state Here, as it includes all the particles, particles of higher size also are there. Particles of lower size are also there. If you go to Aldo Keto meter, you will find that the particle size is smaller. There are less number of big particles and therefore you will have fine particles here and the average particle size is also smaller than the earlier two meters. And this uh, co-precipitation method you see the size of the particle. The size of a particle which has got very narrow distribution in all the three other three methods the product is being obtained and the distribution is a wider distribution. Here a wide distribution. Here also wide distribution. But in case of co precipitation method, the particles are distributed. And all the particles are having identical uh, size, more or less narrow distribution. And all particles are similar to each other. Therefore, such particles are very much useful. If your product is containing the particles of identical nature, then such product can be applied everywhere. If you want to coat such a material on a LED lamp or display devices, then since the particles are of equal size, the layer, the thickness of a layer which is coated on the device is uniform because all particles belong to a So these things can be done at our college level. You select the product, you do, you execute, various synthesis method, you get the product, you are analyzed by XRD, you are analyzed by scanning electron microscope and you are analyzed by particle size. You will come to know which method is suitable for what kind of 
particle size product is desired because the applications are also depending on the desired particle size for different applications may be different. And therefore, a particular method is useful for getting the product and processing the product in the batch. So this is a simple example which I have taken for uh, why uh, simple techniques are useful for getting the optimum uh, performance of the first part and which method can give you that product which has got optimum performance. Here in co precipitation, optimum PL is being obtained, and as you have seen earlier, that this red is maximum, which is co precipitation, although keto is uh, uh, less to that, and minimum is solid state. And these are the reasons and is what we have investigated. Partial replacement of yttrium by LA is found to shift this y 3 u This is what the y 3 u and the peak is less than 254. But desired application I got. Uh, the requirement is uh, excitation violence should be 254 and here it is less than that 256 and therefore it has to be shifted here and this shifting which is being done by incorporation of LA in Y and we have adjusted the contribution of LA to 0.3 and Y is 1.7 where you will see that the excitation peak is closely matches with this dotted line which is a 254 a mercury discharge and therefore you will see that for this particular combinations you will find the emission is maximum and that is how you can do to select the process and after selecting process you do the same thing for the given product uh, by incorporation of the mostly you can optimize contribution of LA the replacement of Y by LA so that the same possible people are using commercially Y but we have shown that this combination uh, is advisable because the performance is available. this is what the color coordinates for using Y and product which we have listed patented this is the product which is now commercially available and the uh, CRI diagram has been improved it shifts towards the darker gray which is the desired application desired requirement this is the requirement for desired applications you can have different examples as well this is an example of why here also different methods are there here recrystallization not focus recrystallization method is not and what is the optimum the optimum is recrystallization here the third product which why we go for here also you will find recrystallization is giving us a narrow band distribution of particle size however other methods have got two different kinds of particles of created by solid state individual method, combustion method, but recrystallization is a better one. However, the uh, aldocuto method gives you lower particle size, narrow, wide, wider distribution, but the size of the particle center is lower. So, aldocuto and recrystallization is useful for this the third example why we go for you will see that see the particle size distribution for solid state diffusion and scale. but in this particular case the optimum performance is being shown by solid state diffusion because this optimum PL for why we go for first part the bulk and as you decrease the particle size the performance decreases so optimum performance in this particular customer 
means if this phosphor is to be used, you have to go for bulk properties. That is higher particle size and with units for Now here, <clears throat> by using these methods, we have prepared materials for various applications. These are basic applications, basic applications like materials for solid state, uh, lighting, high wattage, VUV, uh, quantum cutting lighting, innovative biomaterials for various applications, innovative techniques of electro spin processing for the better performance and making devices to work in adverse situation. These are basic and advanced applications. Uh, quantum cutting phosphors for solar photovoltaic energy, OSL phosphors, import substitute. The products are being prepared and handed over to GRC. Two technology transfers are being made to the laboratory center in case of DNA and OSL. These are advanced applications. Then LED based innovative materials for phototherapy devices. This project is being shot in and that is uh, funded around 48 lakhs rupees and uh, some medical uh, pathology and uh, dermatologists are also collaborating in this particular project. This project will start very soon. Then advanced magnetic nanophosphor materials for targeted drug delivery in case of cancers and uh, cancer treatment and other things. These are advanced applications. We have prepared materials for all those kind of applications. For time limits, I will take only one here, and that is solar energy. You know that the solar energy is unquestionably the most promising energy resource available on this particular planet. Secondly, it is inexhaustible. It is not vanishing, and it is a pollution free. So far as our country is concerned, India is concerned, we have got solar energy. Entire world's energy demand, if you take, could be made by covering only what 0.4% of the Earth's surface. Earth surface with 50% efficient photovoltaic panels. Presently, the photovoltaic panels which are being created by uh, Amorphous and so this lens we call semiconductor materials are being used for solar panels which are having only 15% efficiency and if world's demand energy is being obtained at 0.4% of this what we did for our university my, my university which are having 480 acres of land and 0.4% uh, I have obtained for this uh, calculation square meters 8,448 square panels are required and out of which we have erected 7,000 panel on 7 buildings and what we see that every year our UCT is, uh, uh, is saving 30 lakhs of uh, energy bills to NSC. So we are saving our 30 lakhs and all these erection of the panels is being done from the central government. Uh, it has been reported that the sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface delivers 10,000 times more energy than what we consume. The average maximum intensity is 1366 watt per meter square, and therefore, 0.4 percent is to be covered. Then we can have a lot of uh, uh, energy uh, created, which will fulfill the world's need. The commercial solar cells, as I have said, there is single uh, crystal silicon non standard junction. And now the people are working on inventing different uh, semiconducting materials which will have higher uh, solar photovoltaic conversion emissions. But what will happen to the solar panels which are already erected by many people? Individually or the organization, whole of the country. Whatever solar panels that are being erected, these are to be used, not the photovoltaic devices which are invented by the people. The new solar panels are to be placed. That is not the technology which is useful for us. What we are doing that 
we want materials i will skip you transparency now the uh, the price of solar panel is also decreased and the people who are asking for uh, higher so our objective is what developing cost for materials for sensitization of silicon solar cells a solar cell pv channel directly into electricity due to photovoltaic solar cells are the basic building blocks of the photovoltaic model. The assemblies of photovoltaic cells generate adequate electric power for solar energy supply. There are various types of solar cells which we have. What is the solar spectrum? The solar spectrum AM0 is the spectrum outside of the atmosphere. AM1.5 spectrum which is inside of that. Therefore, we should consider this particular spectrum, this radiation from 200 nanometer to 2400 what is the maximum and at what level the, this is what the uh, visible spectrum this is UV swell this is IR and if you go for the uh, energy associated with the junctions 1 electron volt, 2 electron volt, 4 electron volt and higher 10 electron volt what is the proposition the maximum efficiency limit of this crystalline silicon has been estimated to be only 29% by Shockley and And therefore, maximum fraction effectively used by silicon will be this particular part. However, this shaded part is not being used by presently uh, available solar panels. This shaded part is not also being used, but this is reaching Earth. What we did that materials which will absorb this part of radiation and convert it into the desired part. That is down shifting or down conversion. And if materials can absorb this particular part of radiation spectrum and convert it to the radiation desired level silicon band gap, then this is called a down conversion. So two types of techniques can be used. The materials can be developed, convert it. Photons having the energy of desired energy. So, these efforts we have taken so many materials prepared by so many methods that are being done, and you will see that the see the results. This is a UV part. Now, this is not being absorbed by the our uh, this is solar cells. This is not useful. What materials can absorb this particular energy? Photons having this high energy and emit this particular kind of energy. This is very useful for uh, this line silicon solar cells. So, the 400 to 600, this is also to be uh, used. The DC and down conversion power convert UV visible radiations into. Uh, the uh, NIR radiations. The concept is what our requirement is this each and this is the region two times each and the photons belonging to this are being absorbed and quantum cutting phenomena can be established and then you can have all those photons, one photon absorbed by the material can convert it into two photons of desired energy so that it is as if one photon which is coming from the solar spectrum and two photons, our materials which is being coated on that solar panels that is providing. So 200 quantum efficiency can be achieved so that whatever size of a panel that is desired by us, the size gets reduced if size is less uh, for the desired energy, the satellites which are working on solar panels, the satellite size, uh, the solar panel size is less, the weight of the satellite will be less. And if weight of the satellite is less, the fuel requirement for launching the satellite at a desired destination will also be reduced. We know that 6 rupees per kilometer, that is, the uh, expenditure for sending our satellite to Mars. And if this particular thing is being established, I think 
that cost is also getting reduced. We are working on this particular project where outside of the atmosphere of Earth, we are receiving UV, uh, UV which is not normally reached here. And they are uh, useful people. These, these people are uh, putting their solar panels, UV protecting there. And we want materials into that new protecting layer which is coated on the And we hope that there we can have down shifting or down conversion uh, by absorbing single proton, creating two protons of desired energy is useful. And I thought this we have prepared so many materials and we got success in these materials that 300 to 550 is blue band is absorbed by a material and emission is uh, given in this particular nature. And therefore you see the curve here, the protons emitted by absorbing energy which is not available in the solar spectrum but not useful so far as technology is concerned. Our efforts and success, these are the journal publications which have been uh, published in various Channels. And these are the another kind of materials which are also being used here. See the effect. This is not being uh, absorbed by the existing solar panels. Whereas after absorbing the emission is see, 1060 nanometer emission, which is the desired uh, photons for the voltage conversion. And these all bold materials, K2SR, CL4, C. These are the materials which are prepared by different methods at our undergraduate college by my students. These are the publications which have come out of those things and see the impact factor. Uh, about 17 per publications have come and we are launching the project for getting. We have got collaboration with many people. These are the materials which are prepared. Multiple so instruments, instruments needed. I have submitted a project of 80 lakhs and which is also been short of the collaboration with This is what people who are working with me, all these are doctorate and new students are working under their whole group. That group is the uh, <coughs> our torch peers and all people are having faith in working honestly. And I just thank all these uh, members of my group for exhibiting their efforts through highly reputed publications. These are the collaborations, many collaborations I have established, and all these collaborations can be useful to the people. These are what we followed by uh, Dr. Manish Deshpande. What is the necessary thing is that I see for qualities, the qualities which are selective and qualities which are reflective. So the persons are dedicated. Most of the hardworking people are there, but hardworking people should be very much cooperative. If they are not cooperative, then all those dedications are of no use. Many people are committed to provide the product, commitment with loyalty. So loyalty is missing, commitment is not any value. You should be very punctual, but flexibility is also very much necessary. So punctuality with flexibility works very you may be intelligent, but if intelligent people are not motivated in the right direction, then these intelligent people are also not of use. That be their 100% success, but with a discipline. Discipline is also 100% success. You may be prompt, you will be providing the work with uh, due time, but if, it, if the work which is being carried out is not a smart work, then your properties will not have any uh, uh, out. Means properties 
becomes useless if your work is not useful. One may be innovative, but innovative but not a destructive uh, aspects like uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, which is innovative, no doubt, but it is for use for destruction. So, innovativeness should be always creative and we should have a systematic nature, but logically organized structure only can help systematic. So, what I consider that all you need in life is ignorance and confidence, then your success is sure. Updating and restructuring must continue. Again, without pain. Personal dedications and sacrifice to the job assigned on this planet will alone take all of us to still in the right future. I am very much thankful to the organizers for giving me this particular opportunity, particularly Dr. Manish Deshpande, the college, the institution, sir, all principals of the institutions and whole committee. I am thankful to them and I am very much thankful to the participants. For patient listening. So, silent listening, the words, the letters are same, same number of letters are there, but sequence matters much. For silent listening, I am very much thankful. Hello. Yes, sir. You can uh, select stop sharing. But Hello. Option. Uh, I will stop sharing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sir, sir, uh, kindly unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Ah, yeah. Now I'm audible. Audible. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Amanwar, sir, for your pre uh, precious presentation, which will be very, very highly helpful to the researchers. Thank you, sir, once again. Now I would like to hand over the session to the program co-organizer of this conference, Dr. Manjusha Chitanand Ma'am, Head Department of Micro Microbiology, to introduce today's next resource person, Dr. Maria Luisa Testa Ma'am. Uh, is there any question answer? Hello, Manish Ji. Hello, everyone. Uh, हेलो ओमनवार सर यस 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 सर आपण क्वेश्चन चॅट बॉक्स मध्ये घेतलेले आहेत पण आता थोडासा वेळ खूप झालाय ना हो हो माझे थोडं लांबले लेक्चर नाही नाही हरकत नाही सर इट वाज व्हेरी नाइस लांबले त्याच्यामुळे नाही इट वाज इट वाज रियली व्हेरी नाइस सर 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 इट इज ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ यू आय कुड कम माय सर थँक यू थँक यू सर नाउ चितानंद मॅडम प्लीज कम ऑन ओके सर Hello everyone. Are you audible? Yes, yes. I welcome all of you in the second expert talk of this session. Firstly, I hope you all are strong and safe on these challenging times of global pandemic. Actually, this situation inspired us to organize this event as a virtual event on international level. In my opinion, Nature always gives us inspiration for development of new technologies for environmental remediation. Biomimetic is the term used in liter literature for understanding 
natural process for describing a perfect functional system which is best adaptation to the environment in this kind of technology we can find silicon oxide and titanium oxide both are example of biomimetic materials which brings us to a very interesting topic and the speaker for this session i have immense pleasure to introduce the expert and eminent scientist dr maria krishna she is a permanent research chemist at the institute of the study of nanostructural material icmn of the italian national research council she completed her undergraduate studies in palermo italy and her phd from valencia university spain during which she worked on stereoselective synthesis of polyols and amino alcohols she has vast research experience in multiple countries and organizations in csir india on environmental she worked on environmental heterogeneous catalysis design and synthesis of hybrid organic inorganic catalysis catalysis for transformation of biomass components her research is applicable in the field of biofuel production and wastewater purification she has authored more than 80 works including papers patents and congress presentation i welcome dr maria luzia testa who will talk on characterization of functionalized sio2 and tio2 catalyst please welcome dr maria luzia testa So thank you for the presentation. Now I share my um Can you see the presentation? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So thank you for your kind presentation. And um, today I will talk about the uh, characterization of functionalized silica and titanium nanocatalyst. Nano Just very few words uh, to present me. Um, I work at the CNR, at the Institute for the Study of uh, Nanostructured Materials. Uh, we work uh, uh, on uh, spintronic devices, uh, on drug delivery, and uh, nanomaterials for the uh, heritage conservation. We are located uh, in uh, uh, three uh, sites. Uh, I work uh, in Sicily and uh, in Palermo. Then there is Rome and Bologna. And uh, uh, I work uh, specifically on the um, catalytic and physical chemical processes for environment, and in particular on uh, green chemistry and uh, catalysis. I work on uh, um, catalysts for the valorization of biomass. So. Today I will talk about the uh, mesoporous silica and uh, titania that can be uh, functionalized both by uh, organic uh, groups such as uh, tile group, uh, acidic group, polymers and uh, also by uh, metallic uh, nanoparticles as uh, gold, palladium, titania and so on. Uh, we uh, produce it uh, by using different uh, type of uh, um, functionalization procedures such as uh, uh, grafting uh, method, method, deposition precipitation uh, method is it, or a microwave assisted and uh, of course all the materials were characterized uh, French and spent after the reaction. They are just applied uh, to the uh, conversion of uh, uh, biomass uh, component by the using of uh, uh, waste, uh, cellulose, semi-cellulose and semi-cellulose waste for the synthesis of uh, uh, fuels and uh, uh, added value products, uh, more like that. Um, 
I will show you also as uh, uh, biomass uh, can be used for the synthesis uh, of uh, new materials. So, as concern uh, the uh, characterization, um, I do not talk about only one characterization, but uh, uh, I will show you all the integrated techniques uh, used in this type uh, of materials. Uh, so, uh, we see uh, the use of VT, uh, 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 XRD, SACS, XPS, TGA, MCS, FTR and the acidity measurement technique. These are available at the CNR. Then I will show you some some of them made in collaboration with other research group around the world. By BT and by the um, physical absorption of gas molecules on the surface uh, uh, solid, uh, we can uh, have uh, some information uh, around, about uh, the uh, surface area of the materials, uh, the uh, pores, the volume pore, the uh, pore size, uh, that are uh, very important for the uh, catalytic uh, activity as well as uh, the um, XRD and SACS. Uh, they are non-destructive uh, analytical techniques and uh, uh, we, have, uh, we can have information uh, about uh, the chemical composition. Uh, by uh, the SACS, uh, we can uh, uh, have information on the size and shape of uh, uh, macromolecules uh, the, he, it can determine the, the pore size and also uh, the distances uh, between uh, the pores in the other the materials. By the XPS, uh, XPS is a, a surface sensitive uh, technique. Uh, we can identify elements and uh, um, actually uh, I use this uh, both by the identification of uh, um, uh, nanoparticle uh, doped uh, metallic nanoparticle on uh, silica and titania and also um, when the same support are uh, grafted with the um, organic inorganic group. Uh, we can uh, have information about the elements and uh, all about their chemical state. So we can distinguish between, for example, a thiol group or um, an acidic group, a sulfonic one. Um, no, we have also information uh, not only about the elements, uh, uh, which elements are present, but also uh, to which elements they are bonded. By the TGA, um, we can uh, uh, have information of the uh, amount of uh, doped uh, function. Uh, that means uh, um, how much uh, um, active site uh, we can have on the uh, support. The MPIS, um, I use it uh, in order, it's like uh, ECP mass, uh, and uh, we can have information uh, about uh, the um, quantitative determination of uh, metallic nanoparticles on the support, and it is very high uh, sensitivity. Then we have uh, other types of technique. Uh, like FTR, uh, for the uh, acidity measurement, uh, um, we use also uh, ammonia DPD. Uh, we have also uh, the microwave for synthesis uh, of the materials, uh, UV, TPD, TPR, GCMS, that uh, actually we use uh, on the reaction in which these catalysts were applied. So, 
first of all, we synthesize uh, the uh, support that uh, could be uh, titanium or silica in these cases. Uh, this support is a mass of porous materials, uh, so it's uh, uh, formed by the use of a template. And the template is forming the micellas uh, around which there is the uh, matrix that uh, grow um, or silica or titania. Then, after the uh, calcination, uh, the um, organic material go away, uh, so we obtain uh, the uh, mesoporous uh, materials. Uh, depends on the uh, user template, we can have uh, different uh, shapes of uh, materials, uh, SBA, uh, 15, or HMS, or MCM, these are all uh, silica-based uh, materials, uh, but also uh, we can have mesoporous uh, titania. And we have to uh, characterize it. Uh, so, uh, we can use uh, BT uh, for the, um, uh, identify the, the um, uh, surface area. Uh, here, there is the representation of uh, NHMS. Um, uh, we have a surface area of uh, more or less 1,700 uh, square meter for gram. Um, the volume pore is uh, it this and uh, with the uh, particle size of uh, four uh, nanometers. Uh, by the uh, time, uh, we can uh, have uh, like uh, a photo <laughs> and which uh, we can identify the, the channels. Uh, here, for example, we can see the side channels of uh, SBA materials. Uh, here, the channels are tortuous. Uh, this is an amorphous silica, so there are channels with uh, 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 different types of uh, um, channels. Um, by the SACS, uh, we can uh, have information about the order the, of uh, the uh, mesoporous materials. Uh, then uh, we functionalize it. So we can use uh, a different type of procedures. Here I will show you uh, the grafting uh, procedures and the one pot uh, method. In the grafting uh, procedures, uh, we uh, functionalize the material after its formation and the uh, active sites are located on the uh, surface uh, of the materials. Um, it, uh, we uh, doped uh, before with the uh, tire group uh, that, that is uh, after oxidized uh, to uh, sulfonic uh, one. Instead, when we use the, uh, the one, pot uh, one pot method, uh, the um, uh, material is uh, functionalized uh, during its formation. This means uh, that uh, um, uh, the uh, active site uh, are located not only on the surface of the materials but also uh, inside in the pores. Uh, and uh, um, if uh, um, by the characterization of the uh, two uh, type, the same type of material synthesized by two, di two different techniques, uh, we can have uh, the, uh, some uh, important information. Uh, for example, as uh, you can see here, uh, we um, have that uh, by one pot method, we obtain the uh, materials with a very high surface area with respect to the grafting one. And also as concerned the uh, acid capacities, we have high, higher uh, acid capacity by using the one pot method. We functionalize three types of silica. Here there is uh, the XPS uh, spectra. Uh, here there is the peak uh, characteristic of the uh, sulfonic uh, group. Uh, by uh, this type of technique, we also uh, have information uh, how, uh, how the reaction occurs. That, uh, that means if all the uh, tile group were oxidized uh, to the uh, sulfonic one. Uh, in this case, in both the three cases, we obtained that, that all uh, tire group was uh, oxidized. 
uh, these uh, materials uh, were applied to the synthesis uh, of uh, biodiesel. And uh, uh, actually here, uh, we um, did the spectra of uh, um, uh, the catalyst uh, before and after uh, the reaction, uh, French and fresh and spent uh, catalyst, and we uh, can find that uh, the SBA materials uh, was uh, quite stable. Uh, in fact, uh, the peak of the um, sulfo uh, sulfonic group remain uh, while uh, in, the, in case of uh, amorphous uh, silica, there was the leaching uh, of the uh, acidic uh, function. So this material is not so stable. By the characterization, we can modify also uh, the uh, procedures. Um, I will show you the grafting procedures. And in the first step, usually, uh, we use the uh, toluene because it's a, um, a protic uh, solvent that does not interfere um, if there is a, uh, with the, uh, the uh, reaction. Um, but uh, toluene um, is not uh, um, is quite toxic. Uh, so um, we we think to change uh, towards an eco-compatible solvent uh, such as uh, ethanol. And here, by the TGA graph, uh, we can see uh, has the reaction of course uh, very well in both cases. Um, here, there is the uh, amount we can uh, have the amount uh, of uh, grafted uh, species. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, we can uh, use an eco-compatible solvent now. Now, I uh, will show you uh, Titania um, basic material, very uh, similar. Um, in this uh, uh, work, we use uh, uh, Titania, commercial Titania, P25, or uh, um, homemade prepared by um, soil gel synthesis. Uh, we uh, grafted it um, both by uh, propyl sulfonic uh, group and uh, only by uh, sulfonic group. Um, and we tested uh, on the degradation of fructose uh, for the synthesis of HMF, uh, that is an important uh, um, platform molecule. So actually, we uh, conducted, uh, we carried out this uh, reaction uh, in uh, water. But we uh, characterize uh, the catalyst and by uh, the TGA, uh, we uh, saw as uh, the commercial, um, the, the material coming from the commercial uh, titania were, were um, uh, quite changed with respect to the other one. In the case of uh, uh, XRD, uh, we found uh, that uh, while uh, the um, commercial titania uh, was uh, a mixture of the two phases, uh, anatase and the rutilo, um, instead um, the um, titania homemade prepared by uh, the uh, soldier synthesis was only in the form of uh, anatase. Then uh, we characterize also uh, by bad XPS and uh, of course uh, the acidity. Actually, uh, this type of uh, um, uh, reaction, uh, the formation of HMF, uh, is uh, uh, acidity uh, sensitive. And uh, by, BAT, by BT, uh, we found uh, as uh, the um, material coming from uh, the uh, commercial P25 uh, present a very large dimension for between 10 and, and 100 nanometers, while uh, the uh, titanium prepare present uh, the um, uh, dimension for between 3 and only 10 nanometers, so they are very small. 
and uh, by the correlation all of uh, all these uh, characterization uh, we propose a mechanism uh, for the uh, reaction uh, actually uh, it's important to say that in this reaction uh, mm, uh, there is uh, uh, the mm, possible presence uh, uh, is favored the presence of a byproduct uh, that is uh, humine uh, so uh, the uh, small um, reaction uh, small excuse me the small uh, dimension four of uh, uh, titania homemade prepared material um, do not allow um, to the formation uh, of humans and uh, uh, gave the best performance uh, between all the tested uh, materials. Both titania and uh, silica material were then tested uh, on the uh, synthesis of uh, biodiesel uh, additives assisted uh, by microwaves. And uh, this is a very recent uh, publication, and uh, um, we found that the silica-based materials were, were very stable uh, during all the uh, cycles, and also um, after the uh, fourth cycle, the uh, acidity uh, remain uh, the, uh, more or less the same. So it was uh, uh, simple to uh, restore it. And uh, once again, we did the TGA, XPS, uh, and uh, all the, uh, by all the characterization, uh, we um, can, uh, we could correlate the, uh, the um, characterization towards the uh, activity, the catalytic activity. Um, and uh, um, we uh, realized that uh, the um, activity, uh, the catalyst with the higher uh, activity, uh, uh, was uh, where uh, the uh, materials with a uh, high surface area and also uh, with uh, vol volume for. Here, uh, we'll show you uh, both uh, um, inorganic and, uh, organi and organic materials uh, used uh, for the synthesis of uh, um, 3-acetyl glycerol, acetyl glycerol uh, that are also um, biodiesel uh, additives. Uh, this uh, reaction is uh, acid sensitive, so uh, we determined all the um, acid properties of the uh, prepared material, both by uh, ammonia TPD and uh, by classical uh, titration. Uh, and um, uh, we by uh, the correlation between the BT. Uh, and uh, uh, acidity, we can uh, calculate the uh, surface area, the surface density on uh, uh, blasted acid site. We, uh, this reaction, we tested the uh, um, amber list, all these catalysts, uh, amber list, uh, uh, niobium um, derivates, uh, HMS, uh, uh, zeolite, uh, and uh, sulfonic uh, um, silica-based materials. Uh, and the best uh, catalyst, the catalyst with the best performance uh, were uh, the uh, propyl sulfonic uh, material uh, and the uh, amber list uh, one. Uh, but uh, here there is the uh, stability of the material uh, and, and actually uh, the, the SBA was quite stable and the, this uh, was proved by the XPS analysis in which once again uh, the peak of uh, sulfonic uh, group remain uh, stable uh, after six cycles. Uh, instead, in the case of amorphous uh, propyl silica, uh, the, um, uh, there was the leaching uh, of uh, the active uh, site. 
so we can correlate the, uh, the uh, performance uh, with the, the uh, surface uh, density uh, of uh, acid site. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we found uh, that uh, the reaction, uh, of course, which in which uh, um, uh, with the best materials uh, that uh, have an uh, optimal balance between the number of the acid site and the distribution on the surface uh, of uh, the support. Here, uh, I will show you uh, the um, silica material um, doped with uh, polymers. Actually, uh, these uh, uh, polymers coming from the, um, uh, the um, organic uh, the fraction of the urban waste, and in particular the uh, green uh, waste. Uh, it was uh, uh, treated and uh, uh, is a big polymer identified in which the monomers uh, is more or less like this. This was identified uh, by um, NMR, FTR, and, and so on. And uh, it presents uh, different uh, acidic uh, function. Uh, that were used uh, in order to uh, enlace it uh, to uh, the um, uh, silica materials. Uh, the silica was uh, grafted with an amino group and then the reaction between the amino group and the acid, acidic uh, site in order to uh, form the amide, amide corresponding and uh, These uh, uh, new materials uh, present different uh, um, activity, uh, but all oriented uh, to the abutment uh, of pollutants, uh, in, particular, uh, in particular colorants such as rhodamine, uh, heavy metal, uh, and uh, also uh, phenolic uh, pollutants. But uh, about the characterization, we did uh, the uh, infrared in which we actually see the uh, formation of uh, amide. Uh, so uh, this means uh, that the um, uh, material, the, the lace was a chemical uh, lace, was stable um, uh, and was not, not absorbed only. Uh, by the TGA, uh, we uh, uh, determine how the amount uh, of polymer that was grafted uh, on uh, the uh, silica materials. Of course, uh, the uh, reaction uh, um, uh, the reaction was a grafting procedure. Uh, and uh, due to uh, the uh, presence of big molecules, uh, the uh, BT uh, fall down since uh, 800 uh, meter per gram to 70. Uh, but uh, the uh, reaction, of course, well, and the um, structure of material remain. In fact, we can see here the straight pore of uh, SBA uh, before and uh, after the uh, grafting. The same thing for the HMS. Here there are the spent uh, catalyst and uh, we can find that in the case of uh, HMS uh, we have uh, um, a big destroyed, the, the, the channel are not so, so stable after the reaction. While uh, in the case uh, of SBA, uh, the channel uh, remains uh, the same very well. So uh, this uh, revealed the more stable uh, catalyst. The same type uh, of uh, polymers were used um, as a, a template mm -hmm. uh, for the synthesis uh, of uh, monolites uh, of silica. 
uh, and uh, actually uh, this is a work in progress um, uh, and uh, we synthesize two types of silica uh, of monolites of silica um, uh, the, uh, and uh, here uh, there is uh, a sun they uh, excuse me they were used uh, for the uh, co2 absorbent uh, the uh, silica after the calcination um, uh, we can uh, eliminate uh, all the organic uh, fraction function uh, then uh, the silica materials were um, uh, functionalized with the different types of uh, amino group uh, they were characterized by BT uh, and uh, then uh, as a CO2 absorbent, uh, we, they were tested uh, here, uh, there are all the uh, activity uh, and uh, we found uh, that actually uh, this type of material with only, the, only one amino group uh, was the best uh, catalyst and actually thanks to the uh, if the, uh, FTR analysis uh, we uh, can have the formation uh, of carbonate and carbonate um, that are the witness of the uh, good uh, activity of these materials. Now I uh, will talk about uh, the uh, metallic uh, nanocatalyst and in particular uh, the um, uh, silica material doped uh, with uh, palladium gold uh, uh, on uh, uh, HMS and or SBA uh, in presence of not in presence of not of uh, titania. Uh, this uh, um, was a collaboration with the Professor Road, uh, and uh, um, they were applied uh, on the um, full fuel hydrogenation uh, for the synthesis of molecular uh, platform uh, such as uh, diodes. Uh, and we found that the best catalyst was palladium gold on titania SBA. Uh, now we have. Uh, we will see why. The, uh, we characterize the uh, French spent uh, catalyst. So we characterized by uh, SACS, uh, the uh, HMS, ZIT, or, or Titania doped, and uh, the same things for SBA and uh, Titania uh, doped. Uh, and by uh, BT. And we can make a correlation between the two techniques um, uh, because uh, by the uh, SACS uh, we can have information uh, of uh, port to port distance uh, and uh, well by BT uh, we have information about the uh, surface area, port volume and port diameters but uh, if we correlated both uh, we can have also information uh, about the wall uh, thickness uh, of uh, the uh, structure. So by uh, XPS and XRD, uh, we uh, verified the uh, presence uh, of a palladium gold uh, alloy. In fact, here there is the uh, XPS spectra uh, and we found uh, the presence of uh, palladium zero. Uh, um, that means uh, that palladium is in the form of alloy and uh, palladium 2 uh, that means that is in the form of uh, palladium uh, oxide. Uh, also uh, by uh, XRD uh, we uh, actually um, synthesize different type uh, of material in which uh, we changed the um, atomic ratio between uh, uh, palladium and gold and uh, we can found that uh, the uh, presence of the alloy um, uh, were, uh, was here um, where um, uh, the ratio uh, there are two two actually in this black is only uh, palladium uh, on HMF and of course there is no presence uh, of uh, the alloy 
uh, and uh, we also uh, determined uh, the uh, nanoparticles, uh, the dimension of nanoparticles and the uh, composition. And uh, it was uh, just uh, the presence uh, of uh, the alloy and also uh, the titanium uh, that uh, um, are the responsible of the good performance of the uh, catalyst. In particular, uh, they promote uh, the um, C5O break, uh, break uh, and lace uh, and uh, for the formation uh, of uh, uh, diodes. So uh, now uh, we are uh, um, studying the uh, deposition precipitation method assisted uh, by uh, microwaves um, because uh, um, uh, it is uh, quite uh, greener in terms uh, of uh, time and temperature. In fact, the uh, deposition precipitation procedures uh, occur at least in six hours. Instead, this type of reaction occurs in very few uh, minutes. And here I will show you the uh, XRD spectra of uh, nickel uh, on uh, Syria synthesized uh, by both uh, method and uh, actually uh, we can found uh, that uh, by the classical deposition precipitation uh, we have the formation of uh, nickel oxide instead in the case of uh, um, uh, microwave assisted uh, we don't have this uh, formation and moreover, uh, the uh, microwave uh, influence uh, not only the size uh, of uh, the uh, nanoparticles, uh, but also uh, the uh, dispersion of the metal on the uh, support. Then, uh, other type uh, of uh, metallic uh, nanocatalyst, uh, in particular uh, titania or ciria or zirconia, uh, doped with uh, niobium. And uh, they um, are applied, also this is a um, work in progress, uh, but uh, they are applied on the uh, dehydration uh, of uh, fructose uh, for the uh, synthesis of uh, an important uh, platform molecule that is uh, HMF. Uh, we are characterizing uh, it uh, by acidity and we found that the uh, catalyst with the higher uh, acidity uh, was on Syria and on uh, Titania. But also is important uh, the uh, surface area. Here there is the um, X, uh, XRD analysis and we found once again that the uh, titania um, uh, was in the form uh, of uh, anotase uh, and uh, um, in the uh, uh, final material uh, the uh, niobium uh, is well uh, dispersed. Uh, as well in the case of Circonia, uh, Syria and Titania. Uh, so the best catalyst uh, was uh, the niobium doped on uh, Titania, always in uh, water. And uh, um, so uh, we found that um, we are studying uh, these, uh, these uh, systems, uh, but we think that is not uh, depend only by uh, the uh, acidity, uh, but also uh, by the structure of the, uh, the um, uh, catalyst. Finally, uh, by uh, the, uh, all the uh, characterization technique integrated uh, between them, among them, uh, we can uh, identify uh, the uh, material, uh, not only uh, both, excuse me, both fresh and spent after the reaction, in order to uh, understand what actually occurred on uh, the material. Uh, in order to um, uh, 
think about uh, uh, plausible reaction uh, mechanism uh, that, of course, uh, improve uh, the, research, the research we hope uh, towards uh, the uh, sustainability. So I want to thank all uh, my colleagues uh, in Italy and around the world and uh, um, I want to thank you for your attention. Of course, the uh, collaborations uh, are welcome. And uh, please, uh, at least, visit uh, Sicily for tourism. So, thank you all. Thanks a lot, Dr. Maria Ban, for your valuable presentation, which will be highly inspirational to the So, there are some questions. So, any questions? Hello, Maria Ban. Hi. Already it is been late. Therefore, we are skipping question now. I don't understand because there is the sound uh, is not good. No, I already did late. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing. Are you hearing me? And, uh, I, I hear you with the echo and I don't understand. Hello. Uh, yes, the echo is coming. Uh, two person, I think, uh, are side by side. That's fine. That's a hard one. Now, it's audible. Now, it's audible. Okay. Hello. Okay. Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah. Audible, ma yeah. yeah. I'm Dr. Manish Deshpande speaking. Today, we are already late by one hour. Therefore, question hour session, we are going to skip. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I am immensely grateful to you, sir, ma'am. Thank you. And in future, I hope you will extend your hands for cooperation. Yes, why not? Uh, you can write me or we can talk when you want. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. OK, bye. 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 Uh, at this moment, I would like to hand over the session to the program co-organizer of this conference. Dr. Archana Bhavankar, ma'am, to introduce today's last but not least is the first person, Dr. Kavita Rishpande, sir. Thank you, Aditi. It's my uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Ravindra Deshpande. He completed graduation from Science College in India. He completed his post graduation in Biotechnology from School of Life Sciences from the Ramananda Tip Marathwada University, Nanded, India. He got his PhD from Department of Biotechnology and Bioinformatics from University of Hyderabad, India. Presently, he joined as postdoctoral scientist at Department of Cancer Biology, Wake Forest School of Medicine, North Carolina, USA. Dr. Ravindra has 11 international and three national publications in various reputed journals. He presented 10 papers in various international and national conferences and also honored and awarded for his paper and poster presentations. He qualified CSIR UGC NET for two times. He also qualified ICAR NET GET Junior Research Fellowship, Senior Research Fellowship, etc. He has various technical skills in various aspects. 
like molecular biology and biochemistry rna biology animal cell culture immunology bioinformatics microscopy and cloning please welcome dr ravindra deshpande sir i have hand over to dr ravindra sir for his presentation on experimenting with nucleic acids polychain reactions and beyond pcr thank you uh, hello am i audible yes sir yes sir uh, i was just trying to share my presentation so is it visible yes sir my presentation is visible to all yes sir experimenting oh, with okay. nuclear acid okay so hello all it's nice to interact with you all so the title of my today's talk is experimenting with nucleic acid polymerase chain reaction and beyond as i understand we also have a speaker to speak on uh, polymerase chain reactions that is pcr so i will be giving very abstracted view rather my experiences with uh, polymerase chain reactions and i will be giving uh, a overview of that what techniques we use beyond polymerase chain reactions while we deal with the nucleic acids in nucleic acid i mean to say with uh, dna micro rna and long non coding rna during my doctoral work i worked with uh, micro rnas and at present i am working with micro rnas and long non coding rnas so this is the outline of my talk today so i'll be speaking of my career trajectory uh, pcr so why we use real time pcr so about micro rna detection method how we represent the data so what are long non coding rnas rna sequencing and in situ hybridization so uh, i acknowledge the efforts of uh, the previous ma'am uh, for introducing me so i will be, this is my brief career trajectory i have completed my bsc biotechnology from science college and afterwards i moved to school of life sciences srtm university nanded there i did my msc in biotechnology after qualifying the dbt jrf exam and all relevant exams actually i activated my dbt jrf uh, while doing my phd at department of biotechnology hyderabad central university and after complete completion of my phd i joined postdoc at wake forest school of medicine winston salem in department of cancer biology at present i am working on two projects in one project i am trying to see what are the mechanisms for immunotherapy resistance in breast and lung tumors and in second project i am working on uh, mechanisms of uh, progression of low grade breast tumors that is ductal carcinoma in situ so let's begin with today's talk so polymerase chain reaction i hope you all uh, recognize the picture that i shared here the picture of scientist so he is Kerry Mullis, and he's the inventor of polymerase chain reactions. And and just beside, on right side, is the cartoon from his uh, laboratory notebook, which explains the polymerase chain reaction. So he published a paper in 1986 describing his experiments with uh, polymerase chain reaction, for which he shared the Nobel Prize in 1993. so the basic chemistry of uh, polymerase chain reactions generally polymerase chain reaction consists of three steps denaturation annealing and extension so in this cartoon the big yellow box represents the primers and small light blue box represent the nucleotides so after annealing of the of, uh, the first step consists of the denaturation where the dna is denatured afterwards primers are annealed and extended with the free nucleotides available in the reaction mixture so let's see with this uh, sequence so i will be speaking of uh, primer designing how we design primer so what is melting temperature what are the reaction conditions a few troubleshooting tips and how do we how do the real pcr band looks like in picture i understand that uh, the most of the audience consists of mainly undergraduate and postgraduate students so like i have uh, 
I have kept my talk like having some uh, very basic aspects of PCR. So let's see. So primer length. We generally choose primer length from 18 to 24 bases. So what is the rationale for choosing around these many bases? So let's see the basic statistics. So if, let's say, if we have primer of four base pairs long, so if we see statistics like four is to four, the anneling site, so we have around around one site in 256 bases. So accordingly, if we have primer length of 20, so we have one anneling site among these many bases. So uh, correctly speaking, so if we have primer length of 20, technically it should fit only one only one correct space in the entire genome so gc content what we choose is around 40 to 60 percent melting temperature which is around 50 to 60 percent uh, just right side i have uh, i have just uh, tested the screen of oligocalc uh, server so it's a freely available server i generally uh, to my experience i have designed all my primers manually with oligocalc uh, to my experience, as my experience goes again, so I kept GC content, not GC content, the melting temperature and amplitude count like a, quite a fixed parameters because when I design primer, I make sure that my primer is around 20 base pair in length and I keep only one constant melting temperature that is around 60 degrees. I, I generally don't keep above 60 and below 60 degrees. The rationale for this keeping just one temperature is like say, if we order uh, more than like 10 primers or more than 10 genes. And if we have one constant temperature, then if you want to check like around 10 genes in one slot, we can check. So if we keep on like choosing uh, like variant variable or melting temperature around 50, around 55, say around 62, like we have to use different slots. Like if we keep one uniform temperature, so it will be, it will be helpful in further, like in further experiments while we do with multiple genes. And while choosing the amplicon length, I generally keep below 200 base pairs because once I design primers, I use the same primer for semi-Q PCR and same primer for real-time PCR. Because once you speak of real-time PCR, if we keep the amplicon length below 200 base pairs, to my experience, like it's more accurate one. And like above, above 200 base pairs, so there are chances of getting non-specific amplification that we may get different curves. One more tip, like generally we start and end the first uh, couple of bases with the GCPS because GC band is more strong one and there is more possibility of like, uh, we can avoid the non-specific amplification. Why do we choose the primer pairs like forward and reverse primers? So the melting temperature we keep like it's within five degrees within each pair. And primer pairs should not have complementary region among themselves. So how do we how do we say that? How do we see whether the complementary regions? So as I shared here the oligocal server. So generally what I do is I generally paste the sequence here and hit on calculate. Once I hit on calculate, it give, it will give me a few parameters like the length of primer, the GC content it is having, and the SAR temperature. I generally go for salt uh, the melting temperature which is salt adjusted because while while we get primers it will be having some divident cations as magnesium and once i hit the self complementarity so it will give me whether there are any possible self complementary site within the primer itself so if you want to avoid the manual way of designing primers so there are tools available for designing of primers so we generally choose uh, like primer three server. So it is again freely available. You can browse it. Primer three or primer three plus. The thing is here like we have to just the input. What we give here is the uh, the mRNA sequence that we get from PubMed. We have to just paste the mRNA sequence and hit on click uh, pick primer. So it will give the all possible ranges of primers. Again, if you want to tailor it, so we can again tailor like what should be our primer length what is melting temperature and all these parameters again we can feed here inside but it will again narrow down our search so once we have our primers in hand so what i generally do is i check the accuracy of those primers so again we have uh, we have like i do generally 
the in I generally use the in silico verification. So it is again freely available server, the IPCR server. So here I paste my mRNA sequence. I paste my forward primers, reverse primers, and uh, I generally choose the range like range of product like I have selected and hit on the run PCR. So if my primers are accurate. The complete product range it will give like these primers and it's at dispositions and this is the final product. So again, this is just for our confirmation so that once we once we design primer very accurately, so it will be helpful for our experiments. So how a typical reaction looks like. So this is how a typical reaction looks like. We generally use. 10x tag buffer, we use DNT piece of generally 10 millimolar each, we use forward and reverse primer of 10 micromolars, we use template DNA, tag DNA polymerase and sterile distilled water. Generally, people recommend to use around 20 microliter reaction, but to just save the reaction components for CNEQ PCR, we generally go for 10 microliter reaction and, and it doesn't matter much. And while we see the reaction step, it generally has the three steps. The first step is initial denaturation of generally we keep around 94 to 98 degrees Celsius. And this temperature is helpful for activation of tag polymerase. And this is followed by the three steps. The first step is of 94 degrees Celsius around. The second step is like our annealing temperature we keep around 50 to 65 degrees Celsius. And the extension of extension we keep at 72 degrees Celsius. And generally, these three steps like uh, 94 degree annealing temperature and 72 degree. So we generally repeat these steps at around say 30, 30 to 35 cycles. So we generally don't go beyond 35 cycles because if you go beyond 35 cycles, it's highly inaccurate one. And after completion of these three steps, uh, we generally keep final extension of 72 degrees Celsius followed by hold at 4 degrees Celsius. Now, there are generally few troubleshooting tips like I would like to share as my experience goes on. See, once we receive primer vials, see one more uniformity we keep. Initially, I said like I keep melting temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, like constant one. I keep like my primer length of constant on less than 200 base pair so that the same primer I can use for semi PCR and real time PCR as well. And the third thing I keep, like when I receive primer, I keep a uniform dilution of like say around 100 nanomoles. So if I keep the uniform dilution, it will be very easy for me to dilute the same stock of primer and like any other member from my lab also, you can use the same stuff without any confusion. So generally, I keep the uniform dilution of primers. So as a you know, in last step of PCR, like I said, we keep hold of hold at four degree generally for infinity. With one more recommendation I would like to give is we should not keep this hold for prolonged time. Say if so, say if you keep like four degree Celsius for overnight. So generally, it is not good for the machine, and machine may get machine may uh, run uh, run out of like uh, giving the accurate temperatures so i generally suggest if you are using semi pcr don't keep for uniform don't keep for the hold at more time than one hour so below one is the picture of uh, the biorad machine that we are using presently in our lab and the what at uh, at just the top right bottom so this is how the semi pcr band looks when we take out the reaction and run on the agarocell. The below one is the beta actin band and we generally use as an internal control. And the above one is a BDNA gene just for a representation like I have given. As a reference gene, we can keep like a uh, couple of more genes. Like we can keep gap DH also, we can keep beta actin, we can keep tubulin also because these proteins are quite uniformly expressed uh, in all the cells. So then what are the limitations of uh, semi-quantitative PCR? In semi-quantitative PCR, the quantitation is performed at the end of cycle because we keep reaction. After completion of reaction, we take out the reaction and then we run on the gel. So in that way, like we are doing quantitation at the end. And one more thing is like, we cannot sensitive, sensitively determine the full regulation in certain genes. And 
then this is how can we move for the real time pcr because real time pcr has certain advantages it has a dynamic range of detection it is rapid and faster and signals are recorded in exponential mode so in right side i have just shared the screen i have just uh, pasted a cartoon like on x axis like there are pcr cycles and y axis it's like the dna quantity so generally there are three phases of pcr cycle if we speak like one is the lag phase one exponential phase and the plateau phase in semi queue machine when we do the semi queue pcr so we generally see amplification at the end phase like at when it re when it reaches the plateau while in real time pcr we do we do see the amplification in the exponential phase of cell cycle exponential phase of cycle so about the most common way we use uh, for quantitation of dna is cyber green based detection so friends what is a cyber green cyber green is a dye is a fluorescence dye so the characteristic of this dye is so when it is in solution it will not give any fluorescence but when it is intercalated between the strands of dna so it will give a typical green fluorescence so which is detected by the pcr machine so as the dna product accumulates over the time so more cyber green will be intercalated between the dna strands and more cyber green is intercalated more fluorescence it will give so in real time we can say whether our dna is amplifying or not or to what extent it is amplifying so there are certain terminologies uh, while we use the real time pcr one is the ct value the ct value is the point at which the fluorescence is measurable so initially fluorescence is not measurable so it will go linear it will go like it will go on y axis and at certain time when a certain pcr product accumulates then it will start giving fluorescence so let's say i have marked here uh, with dotted green light so this is the ct value for this reaction so baseline is the point of like initial amplification where the fluorescence is nearly zero so there is it's no template zone a threshold uh, we use this uh, term threshold a threshold is a set of single signal which which uh, which we distinguish amplification from the background noise so so background so background noise is the signal from the unamplified dna and the, this is the exponential phase it is the phase at which the report on amplification is at highest peak and this is this is the seminal phase like we use uh, to uh, we use to see like our dna is amplifying or not and the values we get in the exponential phase we use for data analysis so like how a typical real time pcr reaction looks so generally we start with the tissue samples tissue samples we either start with cell lines also or the human tissue samples then we isolate rna one more thing like here is once we get rna we need to check the purity as well we generally check purity with uh, the nanodrop spectros nanodrop spectrophotometer and by around we we see purity by checking the 260 by 280 ratio so which is around 2 for 2 like standard for the rna and 1.8 around for the dna so once we have rna in hand we use certain rna to uh, to make the uh, c dna and there are commercially available kits which we use to make the cdna and then we use this cdna for real time pcr so friends let's see how a real time pcr reaction looks we generally use cyber green so generally again the recommendation is to use 20 microliter reaction but to save uh, our resources i uh, th uh, throughout my career i have used only 10 microliter reaction and my experience says that uh, so it doesn't matter much whether we use 10 or 20 microliter reaction so even 10 microliter reaction we can we can efficiently uh, come across certain ct values and and we can we can see the fold regulation in certain genes i generally prefer to use the same stock of primers around 10 micromoles so a typical 10 microliter reaction consists of around 5 microliter of cyber green 0.5 micro 0.5 and 0.5 like forward and reverse primer 1 microliter of template dna and 3 microliter of uh, soil distilled water so which consists of around 10 microliters so again one uh, consideration here is we can either use uh, like 1 microliter of undiluted uh, template dna or sometimes like i have also used i generally 
do tenfold digestion of uh, the cDNA I generally synthesize here and out of that ten, uh, tenfold digestion I use one microliter here. So this again doesn't matter much because we will get the CT value. And just top right corner, this is a typical cyberine while how it looks like. We generally, when we order cyberine, it generally comes in such uh, one, one mil uh, vials. We generally get from the cyberine from the BioRad one. So about the data analysis, how do we analyze the real-time PCR data? So hence, there are two ways to analyze data. One is the absolute quantification, which is also called like the standard curve analysis. And one is the relative one, that is the delta delta city method. So I generally, I use generally the relative quanti quantification because the standard one, the or the absolute quantification is used for generally viral or bacterial load determination. So in absolute quantification, we have to use some reference. Well, so what is reference? Reference is a serially diluted sample or a template. So we generally use it to quantify our unknown sample. So we prepare a dilution of the unknown sample and compare each dilution. So by comparing the CT value of both standard and unknown template, we generally get a linear curve. See, you can see in the top right box. So this is how it's like a standard curve looks like. We, when we get like we have uh, the dilution of the known template and there we see, uh, then we see like what is our CT value and we use like the, uh, we use the CT value to see like uh, how is the viral or bacterial load uh, say for example in our sample. So the relative quantification that we majorly use in our laboratories. So in relative, in relative quantification or the delta delta CT method, so there are generally three steps. In first step, we calculate the delta CT. Delta CT means how we calculate delta CT. We generally normalize to the endogenous control. In the second step, we calculate the delta delta CT. We, in general, we do is normalize with the calibrator. And then in third step, we see the fold regulation. In right side, you can see the graph. Say, see, here are the three reactions. So as I said, like earlier, what are about the drawback of semi-Q PCR? So let's say if you do the, if you are doing the semi-Q PCR, so generally say there are three genes. So these three genes have the different level of transcripts. But when you are doing, when we are doing the semi-Q PCR, we are generally quantifying the PCR product at the end of cycle, which generally we see as we don't see any difference between the three genes. But when we see throughout the, like our log phase, so there is a difference between the expression of three genes. So this is where the, uh, the benefit of real-time PCR comes. So in when we see the expression of certain genes in a log phase, we can see a different picture. So these are the uh, three steps elaborated in more details. So in first step, we normalize the delta city of target gene to the reference gene and calculate it from the each sample. In second step, we calculate the delta delta city. Here we normalize the delta city of the test sample to the delta city of calibrator. And in third step, we see we normalize it and we see the normalized ratio. I have given one example. So let's say uh, A is an internal G A is an internal control gene. Let's say either it can be beta actin or GABDH or fibrillin. And H is the gene of interest. Now we have the two conditions. One is the normal condition and one is the cancerous condition. Let's say I have the two uh, sources of tissue. One is the normal tissue and one is uh, cancer tissue of any grade. And then see, then I see the expression of these two genes. Let's say in normal condition, A has a CT value of 15 around and H has a CT value of 18 around. While in cancerous condition, it has a different CT values. In first step, I generally calculate the delta CT value. So how I calculate the delta CT value? I generally minus the, uh, the CT value of internal control gene. So I have a delta CT value of for normal one and I have a delta CT value for cancer one. Then in third step, like I do the ratio of normal to cancer one. So this is the full regulation. Or when I take the reciprocal or when I see the reciprocal, so generally it is, I found like it is uh, gene A is down regulated by factor of around say more than more than thousand fold down uh, down regulation is there. Now this uh, 
second way like how do we quantify it? like one is the one is by when we uh, when we use is the cyber reading method and the second way we use is the tag man probe so what are the tag man probes so tag man probes come with like it is a probe so there are two molecules one is a reporter molecule which gives fluorescence and one is the quencher molecule which quenches the fluorescence so let's say when reporter and quencher are in close proximity so the reporter cannot give any signal but when the reporter when the quencher is or the when the reporter is displaced by the pcr reaction so it will give fluorescence so as there is more reporter activity so more dna is amplified so amplifying microRNAs by uh, qrt pcr so before going for the microRNA, so let's see what are microRNAs. I have just pasted uh, a cartoon which is published from the Nature Cell Biology. So the title of that paper was like Mini Roads to Maturity. So it gives an excellent view of uh, how microRNAs are, how their biogenesis goes on, and how the regulation is involved. So when we see of microRNAs, they are generally transcribed from the RNA polymerase second, and these are called as primary microRNAs. Primary microRNAs are cleaved in nucleus by Drosha enzyme and they are converted into the precursor microRNAs. Now, this precursor microRNAs through nuclear pore complex, which consists of generally the export in five complex, they are exported in the cytoplasm. So, once they are in the cytoplasm, they are cleaved by the cytoplasmic enzymes as Dicer or DGCR8 or TAR uh, DNA binding proteins. And they are cleaved into the mature microRNAs. And so once mature microRNA is there, so, so it binds with generally to the three prime or five prime UTR or the encoding region of micro uh, mRNAs, which stops their uh, like translation and represses protein formation. So how do we amplify microRNA? So we generally get total RNA, like it's not uh, the, uh, the steps we use these are different from generally we use for the normal cDNA synthesis. So in file microRNA, we generally use the stem loop primer. And the stem loop primer, we use the stem loop prim primer for, uh, for formation of uh, cDNA. And the generally one step here is like the one distinction I will say is while designing while designing primers or while the cDNA synthesis of normal uh, normal genes that we use and for microRNAs for microRNAs we generally keep one uniform reverse primer which is coded by the stem loop sequence it is not like we use for the normal genes where we have distinct uh, forward and reverse primer for microRNA we have only one forward primer so which is uh, which is complementary to the uh, miRNA sequence while the reverse primer is generally constant and it is ingoted by the stem loop region of uh, the RT primer. And uh, when, we are, uh, when we are done with uh, the cDNA synthesis, we can, we can use either two ways. We can either use cyber green as I discussed previously, or we can use tag man probes. But we, when, we, when I generally like communicated my manuscripts, when I initial my initial detection I did by cyber green method, but there were many questions asked like cyber green is not that accurate way while we detect the microRNAs. For detecting microRNAs, we generally use uh, the tag man probes. So about I will go a, a, bit, uh, a bit detail while designing how we design the primers for microRNAs for amplifying microRNAs because we generally we can generally do it in by two ways. We can either design manually or we can, there are ready-made primers available, there are ready-made kits available, we, we have to just procure them. So while I was uh, doing my PhD at University of Hyderabad, so actually the thing is like, I could not afford to get uh, the kit because when I, when, I, when I saw the kit price, it generally takes in lakhs. So it was costing around one lakh for like one pair of primers and one for complete set of reactions. So I, uh, so I chose my prim primer in a manual way. So this is a primer designing tool. So it is again, it is available uh, free of cost. It just just we have to paste the paste our small RNA like uh, the microRNA sequence. And uh, when I hit the design, so this is how a result look like. So when I put the my mature microRNA sequence, which I generally get from Mirabase, so it will give me like 
the forward primer and reverse primer unlike like we do for normal genes so we have a narrow choice here we like we cannot be so choosy that i want this much length i want this much tm so say because microRNAs are uh, very small in length so uh, we have to adjust within the within the within, the, within these ranges so if you see the stem loop primers so it has uh, in a blue it has represented a, a sequence from the universal probe library uh, it brown one uh, represented by the mature microRNA sequence and the yellow one is a typical uh, micro uh, mRNA specific sequence and one is the stem loop sequence so this server which will give you two primers like either of two like one is say here is around 51 degrees celsius and one is around 55 degrees celsius and there is one universal reverse primers that you are that you that we don't have to change see if you have 10 micro rnas we can use 10 forward primers and just one universal reverse primer so if i have to choose primers i generally keep like the higher uh, the primer with with uh, higher tm i generally i generally went for like primer with uh, tm 55 so just uh, just as a uh, adv advancing for more accurate way of determination so i generally use this tool to design a primers and i use for my research purpose during my doctoral study and this was the paper actually i published uh, when i was doing my phd uh, that uh, we published this paper in molecular neurobiology it was about the srp alpha protein so we found it it is down regulated in human astrocytoma and there we have seen the presumptive involvement of uh, these two microRNAs microRNA 520d5p and microRNA 520d3p so these two microRNAs like i have used by designing the uh, the manual tool like i have shared before i have used cybergreen based method for uh, for for detecting these microRNAs, but I I was like I was asked a question by a reviewer while while I communicated this manuscript that cybergreen is not that accurate, way. but there are again few papers which we can always use to justify your research. And one more thing we can do in addition is when we complete the real time PCR, I generally run this product on gel and then see and then show the reviewer like so this is how. Uh, the final PCR product look like so in that there is so there is differential regulation of these two microRNAs. So like if you want to avoid and if if there is a good funding, then then we can go for the Tacman based detection. So generally Tacman based detection, uh, it's a like uh, it's a, I will say it's a kitchen protocol because there comes a kit. So generally I'm at present I'm using this Tacman advanced microRNA CDNA synthesis kit. So in at present, like I have used this kit, so it cost around around three hundred dollars, and it comes for around fifty reactions. So I will just go through uh, the sequential reaction steps. So it generally has like around four steps. So generally, when we start making uh, one more recommendation is like when you start for such kit based reactions. So once we start, we should end in uh, we should end at the same time in last we should go through the last phase because once i start in morning it generally takes till afternoon to complete the cdna synthesis because there are sequential steps in one step we generally do the polyethylene reaction it starts with uh, uh, total rna sample and we you uh, we generally add the polyethyl uh, to the three prime end and the just below to the right side i have just given the typical reaction con reaction conditions we really keep for 37 degrees for 45 minutes followed by the enzyme uh, inactivation we do for 65 degrees followed by then we add the we generally add adapters so these are again uh, like uh, tailored adapters we generally add adapters after adding after adding adapters we generally do the reverse transcription so again, reverse transcription, like they don't disclose what are the primer sequences they are using. But again, it is a trade secret of uh, those companies. So we generally use the reverse transcription. We have universal RT primer, which binds to the poly and the mRNA is reverse transcribed. The resulting cDNA is like we can use for Pacman based advanced uh, microRNA assays. And the final step is generally we do the MIRAMP reactions. So we use the universal uh, forward and reverse primers 
because here like we use the universal primer universal we use both universal forward and reverse primers because we have a five prime adapter so for which we have the forward primer and we have like the three prime polyatl for which we have the reverse primer so once we have the miramp reaction we use this product directly we can use this product directly for the real time pcr reaction generally we can go by two ways we can again dilute this product or we can use this product as it is it will not uh, it will not say it will not make much difference just uh, like ct uh, difference in ct value of one or two ct values it will make difference i generally prefer to use the miram reaction as it is while doing my pcr reaction so so friends let's see how a data looks like so i have completed the tacman based detect uh, detection for the four link arrays like this is the data i generated in my lab so i have seen the amplification of four link arrays one is ipw ako23948 one is dlue1 and one is the sna1 so on upper half like so these are the absolute values what were uh, the delta delta ct values Oh, oh, what i what i got from the reaction and i have represented here so the other way of representation is the fold regulation we can see so i have used two cell lines here one is mcf7 mcf7 like mcf10 cell line which is the normal one and dcs.com is the low grade uh, breast tumor cell line the other one is the s1 and s2 so s1 is a normal breast cell line while s2 is the dcis that is low grade breast cancer cell line and i have seen the expression of this four link rnas in this in the panel of these two lines and in the down panel like i have seen the fold regulation so fold regulation again is like much informative for example if you see ipw like from this graph like i i don't have much idea like how is the fold regulation between these two lines but when but when i make uh, the values of the normal one i while seeing the fold regulation i make the values of normal one so how i make the values of normal as a one i generally take average and divide by that average so it will be one and with the same values i divide the uh, values i get from the cancerous condition like from the dcs.com and there i could see like in dcs.com ipw is not expressed at all while it is abundantly expressed in 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 normal breast uh, in normal breast tissues so we can represent data in either ways we can use either the data city method or we can use the we can see the fold regulation so it is both ways are equally acceptable while we communicate our manuscripts so then let's see Uh, the next topic i will go is the microarray so friends what are the microarrays so microarray is a laboratory tool so which is used to detect the expression of thousands in at a time so let's see like previously we have seen while we use the uh, semi q or the real time pcr we see expression of only one gene at a time but when we use microarray microarrays so we can check the expression of thousands in at a time so how we do the microarray so in microarray so it has a microscopic slides so that are printed with a thousands of tiny spots in a defined position so each spot has a has a each known gene so in the right side i have pasted a cartoon so we generally get like say uh, the rna from two conditions like one say one in normal condition and one in like cancerous condition we isolate rna we check purity of this rna then we label this rna Now after labeling we do the hybridization after hybridization we like we do washing to just wash off the non specific or the weak bonding and once we complete washing we generally use like uh, the available instruments like to see the fold regulation in in so how the data looks like in recently in my lab so i have done the micro micro uh, mrna analysis in uh, normal and uh, low grade breast tumors so this is how a typical uh, microarray pattern looks like so i have done uh, this this is actually a matrix microarray so i have done in duplicate so i have used the normal like the tenes line and the low grade breast tumors like the dcis line so here microarray 29c it was coming as a top hit so if we see the uh, color pattern so green means it is down regulated and red means it is top up regulated 
So if you see, like, if you want to see the top upregulated one, so say uh, microRNA 935, it was top upregulated in the DCIS line, while it was downregulated in the breast breast cancer. So uh, basically, I was interested in microRNAs that are typically downregulated in breast cancer. So I have plotted my uh, graph in this way. And I found this microRNA 29C, it was like a top candidate. It was top candidate downregulated in DCIS as compared to uh, uh, the normal uh, breast normal breast tissues so one more thing again when we do micro uh, when we do the micro array and when we communicate such kind of data reviewers generally ask for validation and validation we generally go by we generally use the real time pcr for validation so here i have used uh, the tagman based method for 29c detection in uh, normal and uh, low grade breast tumor that is a dcis so like I could verify my data, so I could find here that uh, the microRNA 29C is indeed downregulated in DCIS as compared to the normal uh, normal uh, normal breast cell lines. So again, what are the advantages? And there are there are when we when we see any techniques, there are always some pros and cons. So the advantages of doing microRNA is a so it's a well-defined protocol for hybridization. We, we can do the well-defined analysis. There are well-defined analysis pipelines. So there are standardized approach for data submission and relatively it is, it's of low cost. While there are certain disadvantages as well. In disadvantages, actually analysis is only for predefined sequences because as I, as I have shared here, so there are tiny spots which are marked on the chip. So there are predefined sequences. So there is, a dynamic data range, data range is a limited one. It relies on hybridization based way, which could be potentially non-specific, and it gives like uh, a there there could be false positives. So that is the reason we use semi qPCR for validation. And one more disadvantage is like we cannot see the fold regulation in certain genes, and it cannot detect the splice variants. Now. Uh, the next technique which I'm going to discuss, like it ad it addresses these disadvantages. So at present, like I'm trying to standardize my things for the RNA sequencing experiments. So what is RNA sequencing? It uses the next generation sequencing platform to reveal the presence and quantity of certain RNAs in biological sample at given moment. So when we do the RNA sequencing, it has uh, generally, it, it is like distributed in multiple steps. We, we have to design our experiment, we have to prepare RNA, we have to isolate and purify RNA, we have to check the purity of RNA, we have to prepare a library, then we have to sequence, and there and at the end there comes the data analysis. So let's see, like we go step by step. So how do we design the experiment? So it depends on what question like we are going to ask. So designing designing experiment, it's like uh, I have uh, discussed previously with uh, uh, semi, uh, the real-time PCR one, what we want to detect, either qualitative or quantitative. So the qualitative includes the identifying the express, absolute express the transcripts, exon intron boundaries, transcriptional star sites, and so on. While in quantitative, we have two sets, like one is normal one and one is cancerous one, and we, then we are seeing, so which gene is more represented in cancer, cancerous condition or downregulated in the normal condition. So data includes, in, while we do the quantitative way, the data includes measuring the differences in expression, alternative splicing, uh, polyadenyl addition, and so on. Here we focus specifically on the experiments to measure the differentially expressed gene between the two conditions. To my experience in my lab, we are generally used the second way. We generally see the differential gene expression between the two conditions, like the normal and the cancerous one. So again, there are generally two uh, para, two terminologies we generally use. One is annotation. So when we see the absolute, uh, when we want to see the uh, absolute difference in the, the expression of certain genes, so we have to do annotation. The role of annotation is to identify genes and the genetic architecture by analyzing the short sequence reads, which which are derived from the expressed RNAs. So say if we have if we have like uh, the gene, if you have more more genes, or if you want to cover the entire transcript or entire gene, so we have to go for a deeper sequencing. We require more reads, 
and it it, it requires normalization to reduce reads which are which are frequently ex which are from the frequently expressed transcripts as far as the like from the rrna gene which are which represents around 80% of total rna pool while we see the differentially expressed genes so here we qualitatively measure the differences in expression of transcripts between two or more treatment groups here we again measure both the counts of each transcripts and variations that are associated with those numbers i will uh, again go through the example so coverage it's not like coverage it's not uh, that stringent that it should it should cover the entire region so differential express studies are using rna seq data are uh, are need to be replicated in order to estimate within and among group variation so the next step is uh, isolate and purify rna so here rna uh, uh, while while we do the rna sequencing we have to be more stringent we have to take more precautions like general general precautions while we use rna like we have to maintain separate workbench so we have to make sure that uh, we have created like uh, our all use, usable items like pipette tips with uh, the rna is removed reagents we have to wear the clothes we have we have to use like rna free water we have to autoclave water we have to use glass jars generally that are heated at 250 degrees for several hours to remove the rna contamination and while we use the plastic jars generally we use the sterile plastic jars uh, at present in my lab i generally we generally don't give this 0.1 normal nr treatment instead from companies only we get uh, the purified and the sterile plastic ware and that we use for our experiment so while we do for the rna seq experiment we have to be extremely cautious because this is very costly experiments and a single mistake that can affect the results of our experiment so i will spend one more slide on how we how we do the purity check for rna so generally as i have mentioned previously when we do uh when we do for uh, cmt or real time pcr we generally rely on nanodot spectrophotometer that is 260 to 280 ratio but there are other ways also we generally do the gel electrophoresis see friend see uh when we when we run rna on gel so we generally get two bands one is the 18s band and one is the 28s band so approximately saying the 20s band is generally of twice intensity as of the 18s band so that is hallmark of check the hallmark to check the purity of our rna and the third way generally people use is agilient this bioanalyzers way back to uh, way back to my university of hyderabad there like i have used the agilient bioanalyzer bio there in common facility we had uh, we had like privilege to use uh, bio, uh, this bioanalyzers so but again it's uh, it's a uh, it's a technique and it's a bit costly one experiment one experiment with agilient bioanalyzer may cost around 3 to 4000 rupees but when we are doing the rna seq experiment it's i i guess it's worth to go go ahead with the agilient bioanalyzer because itself is a very costly experiment and we should not take any chance uh, while checking the purity of uh, our rna so here i have checked i, I have like tested uh, two representative gel patterns so say on left side it is a gel electrophoresis that we normally do and the right side is this is how we get by the agilient bioanalyzer so it is a 1% agarose gel of low molecular weight rnas which are given in len 2 and len uh, sample 2 and sample 4 and while the high molecular weight rnas are given in sample 1 and sample 3 so i have just compared the uh, the pattern what uh, the pattern of uh, what a pattern i get from gel electrophoresis and from the uh, bioanalyzer so if we see like uh, pattern in in low molecular weight rnas in len 2 and len 4 so there are the at end so there are like the degraded bands they are they are they are of not of good intensity when i do the gel electrophoresis but when i do the bioanalyzer so i get very crisp and clear bands so there is like one more advantage to use the bioanalyzers so the next step is the target enrichment so we have to enrich targets because 
the total RNA what we recover from the procedure described consists of like more than 80 percent it is the ribosomal RNA and if we if we go on using the same pool of RNA so we generally get it is very likely that we generally get hits, top hits from the rRNA genes itself because there are more, there are more than 80% in abundance. So if rRNA are not removed, the majority of final sequences that will be from the rRNA genes. So generally we use four methods uh, to induce specific RNAs. The first one like with uh, selection of target RNAs by hybridization, we have to remove the non-specific RNAs. Like rRNAs by hybridization, we can specifically remove them the copy number we have to normalize with the duplex specific nucleus digestion and fourth we can use this target specific enrichment so we can use like either of these uh, four ways to enrich the specific target rna that we are interested in the third step consists of preparation of libraries so in while preparation of libraries we convert the rna to c dna and we in generally we add the sequencing adapters generally the cdn generally uh, generating the cDNAs and adding adapters amplifying the DNA for sequencing. So it, it rounds up this process of library uh, preparation. We utilize the ability of reverse transcript press to synthesize the DNA and using RNA as a template. So, so th these are the typical steps while we, while we use uh, for library preparation. The first step like we use add the adapter at the three prime end once we like it, adapter, we add adapter at both ends, at three prime end, at five prime end. It's like the normal CDNA, the microRNA CDNA synthesis, as I, as I shared, like the com, com, uh, which was based on the commercial kits. It generally uses the same protocol. It has a five prime and three prime adapter, and the specific primers as well. The forward primer is the specific for the five prime adapter, and the reverse primer is specific for the three prime adapter. And then we synthesize the RNA. And then once we once we have the RNA in, once we have the cDNA in hand, we generally check we have to check its quality, and that we can check either by two ways. We can use the qPCR based way, or we can use the uh, agilent based bioanalyzer. So this is the typical uh, kit that we get that we that we use for preparation of cDNAs. So for 24 reactions, so it's a very again the RNA seq experiment is very costly. So let's say. For 24 reaction of cDNA synthesis is costing me more than 1000 bucks. So that's how for each step we have to be very cautious and very alert. Because one single blunder like it can ruin the entire experiment. So the, uh, the next sequential step is the then we get the sequence, then we have to sequence the cDNAs using the sequencing platform. Well, it's, each platform uses a unique uh, proprietary adapters to, and the correct adapters must be added to match the sequencing platform. Say, so let's say if you are using the solid platform and if you are using the, you can use either the Illumina platform. So the previous kit, like I have said, uh, like I have shared, so we have to use the compatible kit here. So if you are using the solid platform, you have to use the compatible kit, which is specified by the solid platform or otherwise of the Illumina platform. For instance, like I will give an example of Illumina sequencing. So this sequencing, actually this method was developed by the Indian born chemist like Shankar, uh, Shankar Balasubramaniam, he's at Cambridge University. So in Illumina dye sequencing is a technique uh, used to determine a series of base pairs in the DNA. So it is again like uh, uh, fragmented in several steps. We have to construct library. So once we have the library construction, we have to fragment the cDNA. So once we fragment the DNA, we attach adapter to each each fragment. So once we adapt, once we attach the adapter, like I have like I have said previously, there will be forward and reverse primer, and that will use for the uh, sequencing come synthesis. So once we have the sequence in hand, we generally check like whether our cDNA is proper or not. And the last step comes with the stereotypical analysis. There we, we, there we, once we get our reads, we analyze it. So we generally use the filter. We have to trim the sequence rates. We have to normalize the sequencing rates. So there are either two ways, like DNO, SMP of transcript, then we have to annotate these results. And once we annotate these results, we have to do the stat multivariate. Generally, we do multivariate statistical analysis to accept to access this transcriptome wise differences among the groups. So generally, we use 
we represent the rms egg data is by volcano plot so before going ahead i would like to give some introduction of volcano plots so what are these volcano plots so in statistic volcano plots is a type of scatter plot that is used quickly to identify changes in gene expression in certain gene sets so in volcano plot is constructed by plotting negative negative log of p value on y axis which is generally a base of 10 and this data is uh, and the, this results in data points to a low p value which is highly con uh, like conferring highly significant results appearing towards the top of plot so let's see friends so this is a typical volcano plot like i have shared so in blue represents the down regulated gene up regulate uh, the red represents the up regulated genes so the upper the value means it's highly significant one so the log of whole change used uh, to see the changes in changes in both directions that appear like equidistant from the center say so if we see at center so there is no no difference and so from either side so we we see the either top either uh, either most most top regulated or most down regulated genes so friends once we do the rna sequencing we get this much of data so there are many dots that means there are many genes that are sharing the uh, significant fold difference between these two conditions say in normal or the cancerous condition so once uh, like if you see any like uh, quality manuscripts that are published in maybe nature communications or cancer research so each paper generally they have this rna set data in it, the data generally looks like this so in in papers how data looks like this i have given one example so how differentially expressed genes how the data looks like so i have like this this paper i uh, i recently presented here in my journal club uh, in my departmental meeting so it is a nature communication article which which explains the tumor heterogeneity and clonal cooperation how it influences the immune selection of interferon gamma signaling mutant cells in cancer cells so so friends so they have used here the rna sequencing platform and the data they have represented in two condition without interferon gamma mutation and with, and with mutations and with mutations so once 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 we do the rna seq data we generally get this kind of data so these are like they have divided this in different categories like genes which are which are having this uh, role in antigen presentation, which are having the non-classical MLCs, which, which, which secrets, which represents mostly chemokines or immune interactions. And further, like they have used, they have seen which genes are like uh, most commonly represented in interferon gamma and interferon gamma and JAT mutations. So these are, again, they have verified this signature by the microarray uh, by microarray platform. So this is how friends see how the RNA data looks like. So once you, again, once we have the RNA data, it is not enough. We have to validate this data either by microarray or by again by the uh, semi PCR machine. So itself is not a complete experiment. So it requires further validation. So again, I will go for the next topic by uh, of amplifying the link RNAs by the qPCR. So before going ahead, at present I am working with the link RNAs, which are the long non-coding RNAs. These are greater than 200 nucleotides and can be subdivided according to their biogenesis. They, they can be either intergenic, that means they are located between the two genes. They could be intron, they are located in intron of genes. They can be either antisense. Antisense means they are transcribed in opposite orientation of, cert of, like, of certain genes. Or they could be bidirectional. Or even the enhancer RNAs. So when we see the functions or the mode of actions, they could be link RNAs could be either guides. So which guides typical uh, certain enzymes are near to the promoter sequence. They could be either scaffold. So they bring together uh, the uh, they bring together certain transfusion factors near to the promoter region. They could be either a decoy. Link RNAs could be like they are involved in chromatin remodeling. They could be a precursor link RNAs, or they 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 could be like serving as a sponges for certain microRNAs, thereby reducing the activity of certain microRNAs. So how do we uh, so how do we amplify link RNAs? As I have said earlier. So link RNAs, we can use either two ways. We can use either a manual way or there are kit-based ways. 
generally i have, uh, i I, uh, i have tested the both ways because since link rnas are more than 200 base pairs long so there is no like we can use cybergen based pcr method very efficiently we, do, we don't need to go for the tacman based method which is a bit costlier one so detecting link rnas by link rna array method so this this uh, system by sense based link rnas link rna array i have generally i have recently used so it comes with the 96 well plate which has certain around say 74 genes and a like a panel of uh, internal control genes so we have like uh, i have represented a cartoon here we have say two samples we have control sample and a test sample we get rna we check purity of rna and we we convert that rna into cdna and when we convert into cdna we generally seed in this uh, in this array plate so because this array plate is mixed with uh, so each spot like say for a1 a1 is mixed with the primers which are specific for link rna 21a we have to just put our cdna and we have to use that and that plate we have to seal it and use for uh, this uh, real time pcr based array so once we put this plate and then the same way like i have shared previously we we analyze the data by the data delta ct method so this is the paper uh, we have uh, we have previously published in cancer research so here we have used this link rna array so in this array actually we got uh, uh, the normal breast samples and from the from micro dissection and from the uh, from the breast to brain metastasis sample because this uh, this in uh, in this manuscript we have detected that the expression of gist gist is a, again uh, link RNA. So we found that loss of gist in breast cancer activates this CMET pathway, uh, and there is involvement of uh, some exosomes which promotes the brain metastasis. We got this RNA by micro dissection. We have used this link RNA, and we observed that gist was most like it was a top down regulated candidate. So in in um, in brain met in brain met samples again like uh, this. Uh, when we use the tissue samples, so it's not adequate. When we publish data in higher journals, so we have to validate this data in cell lines. So here we have used MDA 231 cell line, which is a normal cell line, and the, its brain mate variants. It's 231 brain mate samples. So that we could see, like uh, we could recapitulate our results. So in 231 brain mate samples, or even the SKBR brain mate samples, so expression of this was like much more lower. Uh, as as compared to uh, its uh, its normal counterpart so the next technique is like fluorescence in situ hybridization so we use the in fluorescence in situ hybridization or fish we use fluorescent probes that bind only to those part of nucleic acid sequence which have a higher sequence complementarity these are used to detect or localize specific rnas which, which could be either microRNA, link RNA, or mRNAs in celebrating cells and tissue samples. And it uses a, again, it's a uh, defined pipeline. It uses a special temporal pattern to see the, to validate the expression of certain genes uh, in tissues. So this is a brief protocol in a nutshell. Here we have to prepare sample. We have to use like fish protocol. Again, it's, it's based on the commercial kits. We, it is followed by hybridization. Once we hybridize it, we generally in a humidified box for 37 degrees Celsius for 16 to 72 hours. So after hybridization, we have to get get rid of the non-specific binding by by frequent washing, and we have to counter stain. And once we counter stain, we generally detect by the fluorescent microscope. This is a typical like uh, typical microscopic pattern how it looks when we see under microscope. So it is a protocol for RNA fish. So RNA fish we generally use for tissue fixation, and then we have to use for the probe selection. At present, like I am doing this experiment for to de I'm detecting the link RNA IPW in uh, in normal breast in normal breast tissues. We generally goes like the immunohistochemistry steps. We have generally our IHC slides, and we have to fix our sample there. We have to select probe. So if 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 the RNA of choice is too long, then we have to we have to see the accordingly the probe probe length also varies. If I, if the link RNA is long, we have to cover the link RNA with more number of probes. Then we have to label those probes. 
and once we level those probes with the preamplifier one and the amplifier one look it's a similar protocol if you are familiar with uh, the immunostochemistry experiment the similar protocol we follow for immunostochemistry experiment instead of probes we use antibodies we have primary antibody we have secondary antibody which is leveled with certain fluoroprobes which is generally hrp based detection method so once we once once we hybridize the probe with our target we generally then denature a probe and then we pre then we do the prehybridization and hybridization and once we do the hybridization so then then we those slides we generally detect under the fluorescent microscope so these are actually a protocol in nutshell which uh, about the fish experiment and so this is all from my side i would like i would be grateful if you have any questions to answer if you have any questions i will be more than happy to answer hello yes you are audible uh thanks a lot dr sir for your important Good. presentation which will be extremely rousing to the researcher uh, as being bioinformatician i have one question uh, yes. regarding your uh, asymmetric data analysis so uh, sorry sorry i am not getting this data analysis asymmetric data analysis okay so uh, which technique you have used sir uh, actually when uh, when i was studying we used uh, r language to um, to run the uh, run that uh, uh, box plot and uh, to run the statistical analysis so uh -huh. in your case so uh, in your case what you have used r generally we use r based analysis only okay 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 mm -hmm. and sir uh, what is dino was indian dino designing sir Sorry, I am not getting which which one you are saying. Sir, D N O assembly and D N O designing. So D N O assembly it represents like say if we want uh, in which context you are asking. Uh, sir, in case of D N O nucleated assembly, sir. Means we have hello. Sorry, you are not very really audible to me. Sir, uh, now. now i'm not uh, a bit a bit it's it's interrupting but you can continue please yeah sir i wanted to know what is meant by de novo assembly regarding nucleotides so if you are using certain dna sequences so if you have certain reads then we have to like so when we uh, in in i in the rna sequencing platform so we generally have a reference sequence so in the reference sequence when we do the when we do the cna sequencing so we generally see whether our reads are proper or not so we generally match our reads with the sequence so that is the de novo assembly okay thank you sir so uh, so here the day one schedule comes to an end i would like to hand over the session to the program organizer of this conference uh, dr manish desh pande sir to conclude this session Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. No. So I would like. Uh, I am extremely grateful to all the today eminent research person and proficient participants, students, academicians, and other students in this conference. I am thankful to Dr. S. K. Omanwar, Dr. Maria Krishna, ma'am, and Dr. Ravindra Deshmukh, sir. Tomorrow we have Dr. S. H. Pawar, ex Vice Chancellor from. Kolkata uh, University, by Dr. Suresh R. S. J. from Bangalore I I S R, and Dr. Jitendra Kulkarni from uh, Extension Center of Dr. Bala Seven Rector Maratha University. I am uh, confident that valuable knowledge and ideas sprinkled by the resource person to this conference to all the participants will be useful to overcome new challenges and will define a new dimension in dealing with the scientific. Let me now close by wishing you a pleasant and thought-provoking conference. Tomorrow we will meet at 11 a.m. once again. Till then, namaskar, goodbye. Thank you very much.